Did you guys hear? What's um, that? No. It's the day for lovers. <laughs> uh, it's the lovers' day. Hello, everybody. It's oh, it's my dad's my birthday. Birthday. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, happy birthday, Papa Brushwood. It's also Teller's birthday. Salsa Teller has a birthday. Salsa. Salsa Teller. Uh, what well, else? Wow. Okay. Wow. That's that's a quinky dink. Yeah, that? right. That's uh, what a quinky dink. <laughs> Salsa teller. Salsa teller. What the hell is that? It's like uh, it's before you dip a chip in, you want to know how it's gonna go. You go to a salsa teller. A salsa teller. <laughs> and they say, "I see, <laughs> hot. Oh, so hot, <laughs> but also tasty." So. so do, do the syllables cilantro mean anything to you? I, I feel like Salsa Teller also sounds like the third feature on a rap song. <laughs> like Kendrick Lamar oh. featuring Be Real and Salsa Teller. Thank you for telling me that. Uh, you, know who, you know who would be great for a Salsa Teller uh, uh, job? Would be my little niece. My, yeah. my two-year-old uh-huh. niece, Gray. No, sorry, Sloan. Oops, oops, <laughs> sorry. What I would love to believe. Sorry. Like, I know, hey, welcome I, to the I, real I, world, kid. I, hey, Sometimes I, I, it happens. It literally I happens. I know you're mixing up like multiple nieces, but I would love to believe that you only have one niece. <laughs> <laughs> and you just try to pull just a random name. <laughs> and then said no, and then went with another very different name. And the whole weekend I was, the whole week I was gone, I was mistaken for the, for my brother. Um <laughs> Uh, no, but she so she's only two years old, and and it's it, it's terrible. Uh, but she uh, is she Just loves power through. to power eat through. salsa and guac. She loves chips and salsa. She loves chips and guac. But she at doesn't two. Eat, at two, she if it's spicy, she'll eat it spicy. But she doesn't eat the chip. She just uses it as, as like, like a, a spoon. spoon. Yeah. And just get salsa. And you would have to like tell her to like eat the chip, tell her to, or tell her to stop because she would just eat because it's just it. dip. Yeah. yeah. Um, that stuff is expensive. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, uh, if it's good. I went through a phase where I would use um, celery instead of chips. So basically, oh, it was just for salsa. Up, yeah. Just eating salsa. Pico de gallo, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Tortilla chips are probably well. That's still carbs, I guess. If you're about, if you're, if you're about fried carbs, yeah. I got like a little mini elephant ear. A little bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. Bro. Um. Already. Hello, everybody. Well. Uh oh. Oh. Okay. Brandon needs a minute. That's just fine. You know, I had. Uh. So I ordered. Mm, I ordered groceries. Oh, do tell. For because I just got back. My house has yep. been empty for the past week. I needed bread. And they gave me. Yeah, dog, don't we all? <laughs> yeah, dude, go out, man. Make that bread. We I, support you. I, Gig life. <laughs> Plot your stacks. I need a new hat. Um, I, uh, so I did the curbside because they didn't have delivery. Delivery would have been later. And uh, they gave me free food. I got free food again. They fucked up an order and gave me someone's bag. So I got. And I fucked up someone's sexy night too. What? I got two <laughs> because they were definitely in the middle of coitus when I walked in. I got and two... said, "I'm here for my groceries. <laughs> I'm here to make bread, yo." Yeah. I got two tins of melting chocolate. Uh, uh, uh like some cr- like crudite things, like cheese and grapes yeah. and 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 stuff. Oh. Um, yeah. Wait, what what day was this? Saturday or this, Sunday? Oh, this was uh Wednesday or Thursday. Oh. Oh yeah, and today's the lovers' day. Oh my goodness. <gasps> I think you might it might have been Super Bowl or Valentine's. That that one oh, could go either been. way. Yeah. That there. they wanted to do a big fancy Super Bowl thing, and next thing you know, there's Bryce absconding with the chocolate <laughs> like a thief in the night. They're usually He's like, uh, this chocolate is going to go straight in a mouth and not touch any erogenous zone nope. on the way. I, <laughs> Except for the mouth. <laughs> I just like that he went for the word, went for the phrase crudite instead of saying, like, I would have, you know, grapes, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the all the four basic but, food groups. Well, I had to, I had to hold I'm my... Like, crudite, is that the one with the mallets and the balls you play in the lawn? <laughs> <laughs> I don't hold myself back from saying adult lunchables because one of them was 
uh, little <laughs> tiny ham slices with little pita crackers, little uh, uh, salami, salami beat, the little salami cubes and cheese and a like a chicken dip, like a dip even. Okay, that was definitely a Super Bowl party. <laughs> that was not an erotic event. There's I'm no erotic event with tiny salami cubes. Wait, 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 both. wait, wait. Let's. Oh, I'm sorry. They they can't be the same event. Like, yeah. Couldn't have been a Super Bowl party for like swingers. Uh, they could have been certainly. All right, uh, lovers. So Bryce, you're. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're all in agreement. It was a Super Bowl party for swingers. <laughs> <laughs> and try, everybody try, try scored. Real hard not to make this a great night episode. <laughs> so sorry, everybody. <laughs> we had to fill the time while Andrew. Everybody was on. hit pay dirt. All right. Everybody want to do some weird things? Ready? Yeah. All right. Andrew, I'll count you in. And you can begin in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Grout. And uh, new engineer we're testing out here, Mr. Oh, hold on, read this. Uh, Bryce Castillo. Uh, th uh, th thanks for having me on. I'm, th I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Good, good. You're yeah, damn right. Really You're good. damn First right. Day, you should be. Will you at least act excited? Yeah. 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 Come um, in with a little pep in your man. steps. Off Snakes. to a bad start already. <laughs> no, I think this is, this is a good start. Uh, happy Valentine's Day happy to Lover's all Day. the uh, all all the Valentines. Yes, out there. Justin. I say yes. God, oh, you're just wishing me happy Valentine's yeah. Day. I wish That's everybody a happy yeah. Valentine's Day. I hope uh, everybody has right. a fun. I hope, I hope uh, you get a little candy heart, and I hope you write a little Valentine to your Valentine. Yeah. Hey, Andrew, uh, I, I choo choo choose you. You? I was just thinking that in my head. <laughs> Look, if you slow it down, you can see the moment his heart <laughs> <Yeah. breaks. laughs> Uh So, uh... Speaking of, of things, obsession and passion and things that, uh, you know, some people love with uh, beyond all reason, but still keep faith in and, and actually not against reason. Cryptocurrency. Um, I was going to say. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that too. That I remember I saw an article or some a comment on Hacker News where there was a big thing where uh, this guy had this thread about how some people tried to so social engineer his way to try to steal his crypto wallet. And this is a guy that had developed like a big... Um, 3D object kind of like some big, you know, virtual project where he had like a hundred million dollars in one of these coins. So like he was a likely target. They talk about somebody saying, oh, we want to help out with your project. Here's some virtual assets. Here's this. Do you need Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. We uh, seem to have lost it. And oh, we seem to have lost. Okay. Give me one wallet so we can authenticate this thing. Oh, in the uh, code. Okay, sorry, do you mind giving us one second? We may have to drop from the Zoom call. We're going to pause and, 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 and I'm going to come right back. Okay. Uh, leave meeting. Make you enter the new host. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Let's get it. Come on it. On it. And there's an answer. At, at like the bottom of blogs or whatever like i think that, that was that was the initial idea and then that was you know because that's where i found the what's it called the the picture of bill o'reilly that i made up as palpatine remember that are we putting this thing out uh yes we are just <laughs> about <laughs> uh, hello andrew uh, ooh, 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 ooh. hello yeah, andrew don't... can you hear us now I think that is I that like a, to be part of the show. Is that a Twitch? Guy. Oh no, there we go. No, there we go. Okay. Now we're back. All right. I think we should be back. Apologies for that. We flipped a thing and we've tried a new thing. So, uh, uh, the la last thing we heard uh, was um, so, uh, a wallet, some digital assets, mm. social engineer uh, theft of crypto. So, so this gentleman uh, detailed, you know, basically what happened on there about how people tried to social engineer their way into it, and it was funny because you know one person. A comment made, somebody's like, well, this is why I stay away from crypto. I'm like, 
this guy made a hundred million dollars on crypto. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know that if, you know, I don't know if that's a good reason to say, ah, somebody could stick my hundreds of millions of dollars away. So I don't even bother crypto. I'm like, I mean, that's oh. look, the only way to get robbed of a million dollars is to make a million dollars. Yeah. So yeah, half a million dollars. <laughs> consider yeah. this guy safe. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's like, it's like, like uh, why would I want to be a billionaire? They just take taxes, man. It's like, yeah. such a yeah. headache. Yeah. I mean, it can be, and when you start, you know, when you start writing grown-up checks, it's it is, you know. Uh, you know it's it's like, it's so funny to, I don't know, be on the outside. I'm so happy that I'm out on the outside of this highly volatile emerging market of NFTs or whatever, because you could tell we're the world is still, as a whole, still learning what. Uh, cryptocurrencies even are much less what they could be spent on and along with that comes from you know like well what can you buy with it it's like well uh uh, uh you here's a company store that sells beanie babies in the form of silly nfts and then everybody who buys possibly overpays like 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 it's there are some great attention grabbing unfair headlines that that uh, basically boil down to somebody bought this for one Bitcoin. Now it's, you know, it would have been, a hundred, he paid a hundred thousand dollars for a pizza. What a dupe, you know, that kind of the, thing. Yeah. The, the Bitcoin pizza guy. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, I didn't know. I, I thought I was just making up a thing. Oh no, there was, yeah, there was, there was, there was a famous, <laughs> a famous Bitcoin pizza that, that That's amazing. is our, our, our mark in time to ex exactly how much. Cause I think it, it, Andrew, if you know this, uh, uh, was it for one Bitcoin? That he bought the pizza yeah, like for. He tipped. He like tipped. A, yeah, he tipped like a. There Bitcoin we go. Or something for he the tipped pizza a Bitcoin, yeah. and uh, uh, now it's like, oh, that's a. I mean, it, it's pizza. A, it's like I have enough pain from the one time that I played a game called Magic: The Gathering, and I didn't like the way that game caused me to fight with my friends, so I gave my cards away, including a first edition Black Lotus, and so now. For the rest of my stupid life, I have to know now it's worth $100,000. Now it's worth $130,000. Now it's worth blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I, uh, I hear you. I would say that I look at when I was younger when I bought stock and then I had to sell some stock because not because like I'm like, oh, I got the market figured out, but I'm like, oh, huh. I don't have other forms of income, but I, you know, buy stock when I have money. And so now I have to sell it and I look at it and I'm like, well, you know, I could have got a job at Walmart. You know, I could have, I could have worked as a door guy and kept this money or something and have been in a better position. But then it, that experience made me more, more aware of value, you know, and that later on, I'm like, like, no, <laughs> you know, if I think it's going to have long-term value, I don't sell, I don't give it up. And so that's the price. That was the price of saying, if I think there's things for luck where you just can't know, like, I don't like a card. Like there's no way to know, no way you could really know. Maybe you could, I don't know. But other things you go, okay, if I think I'm right and everybody else is wrong about the value of this, then I need to stick to my guns. Yeah. And then there's the other price of like, you know, something goes up and then it goes down. And you're like, I could have sold at the time to get the thing. Yeah. But I don't, I never get like, uh shock shocking disclosure here i own tesla stock um that has been one hell of a roller coaster and i went through my apple roller coaster where i bought apple back in the early 2000s and watched this thing go up and then people were like well this is this is the height you know this is where it's going to be and then go down and then go way up and then with tesla that that stock fluctuates wildly but like my idea is like i don't want to sell i don't plan i plan to hold on to it you know i hold on to it for 100 years like i don't i don't want to I'm getting, you don't need to sell stock to make money more. I just want to keep stock. So those swings, I, I could make myself sick looking at like, you know, like one of my accounts, like a Robin Hood, if I had the wrong mindset of like, well, there went my house, my first house, you know, in a day. And then you're like, yeah. but then you just get to the point where you're like, long term, do, baby. Long -term. Do, you, do you think that this is um, maybe, a, a, maybe a weird heuristic for like, I don't know, gambling or gambling problems, gambling trends? The idea of like it because I because I, I, I feel like that makes a, in my head a pattern link between 
what we see what we've seen for a very long time with crypto coins and crypto trading and what we saw uh what was that last year uh, with the the game stock the, the game stop stock uh diamond the, the hands stonks thing, the stonks and uh you know that was not a crypto thing at all but that was a lot of like uh, russian we're going to do this thing because this is it in such a vulnerable place and there's a lot of I, a lot of potential i, I think i think the, the the common thread there is the internet but I, I think that they are they are two different uh uh you know value propositions at the very least I, it just I, feels I, like jur same... journal journalist man says the internet may be involved uh uh man says of organizing it th there's also there's yeah. also a uh, common thread of 20 somethings who are doing things yeah. who have I, not experienced the pain of loss yet yeah financial irresponsibility like, and those things go hand in hand uh, well, right yeah well i, I don't well, know if it was financially responsible yeah. well mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah I don't, oh go ahead andrew yeah I, well just you know follow on bryce's point i do bryce i think that to your point yes i think the danger comes in like where i made i i have you know i'd have discussions with friends who talk to me about like investing which do at your own peril and i'm like you can be a trader, you can be an investor. I'm an investor. I look at something, I think that that's value, and I will determine what I think the value is and when I want to get out, which means that it doesn't matter what the headlines are tomorrow or whatever else, you know, unless it's like company burns down. Um, I don't go by what the market's doing. I don't, I'm not trying to fight the market. I'm physics is what I'm trying to go of like, oh, does this technology work? Do I think it'll scale? Do I, I'll make a bet there? There's the other mentality, which is, oh, I'm going to trade it. I'm going to get my, my book on Chinese candlestick trading methods and stuff, and I'm going to try to time it and try to time all the other dummies like me. I'm not into that because, like, I just – that statistically time in and time out is, is kind of a fool's game. And I think that's where also people get anxiety. And I do see – I had friends that were into day trading in the 90s who had idiotic thing, like strategies, like – Oh yeah, if I lose a big thing, then I just I do uh, I double down my next bet. You're like that makes no sense that's at actually, all. Like, that's actually cool. gambling. Like right. that that is that is just yeah, chasing. That, well, you you see that, but you also see the same rationales of like they talk about uh, you know how uh, maybe it was even Cialdini's book Persuasion, like the early studies, you know, gamblers were like. Oh, do they? They must forget their losses. No, they remember the losses and yeah. vivid details, but they explain them. Like, oh, it was, it was an away game, you know. Oh, so and so didn't start the game, so it wasn't good. My theory was perfect. It was just that you know these things came into it, and so people will explain away their losses and stuff instead of going, well, "Oh, I Im I'm bad imagine at this. you have a theory that ninety nine times out of a hundred is totally proven true, and every time." You are right, you get $2. But the one time you're wrong, you lose $1,000. You will vividly remember that loss of $1,000, but you will have 99 other experiences upon which you can draw confirmation uh, that your theory was right uh, in general. I mean, like, uh, yeah, and if again, I bet a thousand dollars that time, I would have made it. You know. Well, and, yeah. and again, it's like a, uh, the way I explain the gambling game of craps to Justin is uh, invest in everything. Everything pays forever. Just pretend 9/11 will never happen and nobody could see Always it happen. Pretend. And then, uh, and then sooner or later it does, and we're like, oh, nobody could have seen that coming. Yeah, literally. A million other metaphors we could have used, but, <laughs> but it, yeah. it's it, always 9-11. I mean, in my life, it was a fairly seminal moment. <laughs> Some of us aren't so we're blase aware, about we're it. Aware, oh, we're aware, we're aware, we're aware. Some of us never forget. We're aware, <laughs> yeah. we're aware. Yeah. Never, we don't forget, yeah. don't worry. Mr. Something Something. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's just, it's very interesting because, like, NFTs and digital collectibles are... Um, you know they are handled in the same way as uh, stocks, um, and in ah, the same way. Can I? Or, or okay. Oh, let me add. Let me add a qualifier there. Let me add a qualifier uh, there because I thought I mean, that, and okay. then, and then I looked. Yeah. Go, I looked at. Why did Twitter add the ability to use an NFT as your logo? As your avatar. Well, well I, I think I think Bryce may, might be heading there, and I and I want to give okay. him a runway to make his point before. We talk about it. Well, I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I make you a point. <laughs> I, I think there are a lot of similarities between, um, uh, b between gambling and stock trading, and a lot of what we see with crypto, whether it's 
coins and currency exchanging or collectibles and and reselling markets even you know put, putting them on display i mean it's uh, you know I, I get that there's this idea of like oh hey you know there we can build in interoperability um into these things but i think that most of what has been manu- has manifested so far has been let's try to do uh, do some stock market stuff and make money and not really i haven't seen the other applications I, opening up banking I, access I, or yeah i th- i agree that the, the the idealistic reasons for having it haven't really happened but i would argue uh, more so now having spent a lot of time looking into this there are several different groups driving what's going on there and from the outside we just think that it's this thing but there are several like the the NFT market, a large part of you go look at OpenSea and you look at the top selling NFTs, you look at consistently what keeps selling what their portraits, their lo- their artificially generated portraits, their things that people can use as an identity. And I think of the people who line up to buy stuff from Supreme, who line up to buy clothing and things of the label. It is they're trying to buy an identity because yeah. in their group, their in group, this has huge. If you have an original board ape, you know, which is one of these NFTs that came out, if you have one of these, you have one of these as your identity, then you get status and stuff. Being able to own stock or to say, I got Berkshire Hathaway may have impressed a small group of people, but you don't get a display, you don't get to show it. And that's when you look at like Twitter going to the effort of saying, hey, you could use your NFT as your avatar. And a lot of people are like, why would I do that? Because people spend so much money. At it. You got CryptoPunks up there, Cool Pets. Most of the ones, look at those. Azuki is a membership club. That's I think that's what that is. There's a number of these are actually membership clubs that literally is selling exclusivity, exclusivity into groups. So that's a big thing I think we have to acknowledge is that because uh, there is the, the liquidity of these things, the trading of these things, they don't get traded as much, even though there is, as we just saw recently, this couple that got arrested, the allegation they're trying to, you know, they were trying to launder billions of dollars of crypto. And if you take a few billion dollars of cryptocurrencies that have been stolen or absconded with and people are trying to launder and move them, that also explains another factor of what's going on in these markets, because I have friends that do these drops and they watch these mysterious buyers come up and buy a bunch of stuff. And then maybe it changes hands with somebody else, et cetera. So I think there's a lot of factors. But like in the, a lot of people I talk to, sort of the younger, the 20-something ones, identity. Identity really gets wrapped into it because they want to buy that NFT to be, this is who I am. But I, I guess, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. Um, but I still, you know, I just look at it all as like, baseball cards and well, if and, you put it in a that's exactly base. how you should uh, uh, look at them because that's exactly what they are they're well, beanie babies i i mean i, I don't, don't know I, that that's helpful though okay my I, hold on hold on i'm gonna make an argument yes we can generalize at this but when you go look back at that top 10 and you say oh i want to understand what's going on in the psychology there i could use a very broad stroke oh it's baseball cards it's beanie babies but then when i look at the number one what is it? it's a pro it's an avatar of a person right. second avatar of a person third avatar of a creature fourth is a membership club but i think number five is a membership club and it's all tied into identity it might be more helpful to say yes, but there's this identity thing driving it that's not present what in stocks people, or even Beanie Babies. Yes, yes, and I think Bryce, what you're identifying is the fact that because it's a volatile and explosive market, what we wind up headline seeing are things sold for X, things sold for Y, and that the copycat behavior on that is let me acquire a thing and let me sell a thing, let me flip it in the same way that you can flip. Any number of things from houses to baseball cards to stocks, right? To like day trading and stuff like that. What I think Andrew I, is is uh, uh, pointing out here, and I think uh, and I agree with him, is the idea that if you're really looking at where the money is going, it's it's into this idea that in a digital world where anybody can be anything and anybody can create whatever life they want to and and use whatever hashtags they want to is there something beyond that is there something that through money i can signify in the same way that if i pull up in with a dodge stratus in front of a a, a hotel or a, a a restaurant it's different than if i pull up in a bugatti can i have that experience can i signify to anybody uh, uh around that i that i have that and I I understand I, I get I see the I, I see the I see that on paper I understand that right 
Um, we, we're a more digitally and, and interconnected society than ever before. Um, it m makes some sense that you uh, on Twitter could have a very open um, frame for whether it's an identity thing, whether it's a social club. Um, I, I guess just, I don't, I, I, I don't know why it's these thing why it's these specifically and I don't know what the social clubs are other than people who go and say look at how much money we spent to say we all spent this much money um so basically every conversation at Soho house <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it's the same thing that club private clubs have been be because forever. i mean i i actually think i am gonna stick firm by my idea of like digital beanie babies only because like the difference is that there are infinite that they are just cranking out different What's, ones uh, and wait, wait, here, displaying here, it is very important here, and i think that the, the displaying of it is a part of the identity here, here's here's the number one i think that that whenever we get into a conversation about nfts it's very very easy to quantify it as one thing or another because we were at the birth of it like the the to me the biggest concept of nfts that everybody needs to understand is that this is virtualized scarcity and that is a a philosophical idea that some people i i think you know it, it for whatever reason erases all these primal kind of responses within people which i find fascinating but if virtualized scarcity i mean if we just look at scarcity scarcity drives so much of of our society right like like scarcity is the, the difference between a BB, a beanie baby and a country club membership, right? Like they both rely on scarcity for why they are valuable per se, but that does not mean that a country club membership or a beanie baby are the same thing. So well, and, we, and I think that, that it's like unhelpful. The, yeah. Uh, I think it's unhelpful to say what the thing is. And instead the significant question is where we are in the evolution of the thing. And uh, I believe you are correct. For many people, we are, at the Beanie Baby phase of spending money at the company store because the concept of currency has not yet evolved into something that becomes a crypto as payroll for for uh, for everybody, uh, and they're cool with that. Um, uh, there's in-group and out-group pressures. There's uh, fame and shame dynamics where if you buy in for conspicuous consumerism, similar to uh, you, you want to be seen buying your Prius or your Tesla, but you don't want to be seen selling your Prius or Tesla because uh, those are those are uh, conspicuous designs. And the last thing you want is to be called out and told that you're buying into a fad or whatever. So once you buy in, you might get uh, uh, sensitive to that. But again, that's not what it is going to be forever or what it is. It's just where we are in the evolution of, of that process. I, 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 and I don't disagree. I think the idea of, of, of using a blockchain technology is very fascinating. I think using that tied to currencies or digital goods is fascinating. You know, um, one, in fact, one, there was an idea that I was ex actually really excited for at first that actually didn't end up being what I thought, but there's, there's a, this band that I really like and they do a lot of 3d scanning and, um, visual stuff. And so I, I turned out that they are doing some NFT project and I thought, Oh my God, that is the perfect thing for NFT of we'll give you an OBJ file, or we'll give you like actual digital data that is rare, that is blessed from us. It is, you know, a pose of them, you know, doing a T pose or doing some move. Um, and there's like interesting value there because it is like natively digital information. Um, you, you have like authenticity and it, that's not what it was. It was, it was MP4 files. It was movie files. Um, and it's like, that could have been, that at least is, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I only say the, the, the beanie baby metaphor because I, uh, that's me saying what I see and I don't know. What uh, else one, is here? One hundred percent agreed. Because why we're doing this with crypto? Oh, well, because we have to. We have to crawl before we walk, but, and it's but like if it's, we if people, will get to that phase. But well, for we're, now, we're just in the Beanie Baby phase. Well, people really yeah, want. We're getting a social club. Why do they? Aren't there easier ways to roll that out? Well, I, you're, we're assuming that everybody in it knows, understands what's working and what doesn't or what does, and yeah. every, that everybody's acting rationally with that. We don't know. And people are doing mm -hmm. many different things. And I, I just probably try to break up my data point. That was on uh, 
OpenSea was the top 10, the, the things that consistently sell were identity based and, and, and people who've been really savvy have created these membership clubs, like the, the stronger identity base they get. What you saw with that band was frustrating because there is all these exciting things that could be done out there, but just, it is a cash grab. It is just, I read through these proposals for stuff and it's, it's kind of disheartens me a bit because it is not even, Hey, we're solving a problem. The only problem they're trying to solve is, wow, a lot of people have money in cryptocurrencies and we want to get that. Uh, you know, somebody pointed out in the chat, NFTs and isn't the same as crypto. I, it, I mean, the, the idea is that you use, you know, the blockchain yeah. as a way to assign ownership of a stuff. So it's related to that. But people buy, they'll buy an NFT and it's stored in an Amazon S3 bucket. And it's like, okay, this seems really Web3. There's a lot of silly things. And what you saw was like, yeah, some company, some marketing company came together and put together a plan. They went to this band and or, I'm hypothesizing here, but mm -hmm. like, hey, we can make a bunch of money. All we have to do is call these MP4 files, you know, MP3 files. We'll call them, you know, this thing. And it's exciting. And I see people go, have you heard about this company doing it? You go to their webpage. It's like, I think it's bullshit they're, they're talking about a thing they're gonna do all they have right now is some coin they spun off of ethereum that they're selling and oh and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this it's like they hired a web designer i've we don't want to get into details but i talk to people because i sometimes ask to advise to people and i talk to people who are complete idiots when it comes to technology who raised large amounts of money based upon the fact they put together a really good presentation that other people who are equally ignorant go oh you, you guys this is great it'll be exciting <laughs> and i'm like they they're not going to be able to build this. They don't know how to build it. They're so No, this is this is making this is making it's raising money and it is generating money for the same reason that from a consumer or a producer perspective when I was uh running Andrew's store, uh it was always uh, a a fun day when I would see that uh um, all the orders were PDFs for digital download PDFs because it meant that I didn't have to ship anything and I didn't have to worry about our physical stock getting low and then doing a reorder. It was just money that came in. Uh, that's why from the production point of view, you're going to see everybody say, oh, sure, I'll take the 12 hours it takes to carve out whatever MP3s or JPEGs or, or, or uh, .mov files to then put through whatever process I need to, to, to make money. But that's the easy idea, right? The, and I think why it is instructive for Andrew to be pointing out, like, but look at what's actually selling it is the idea of, and, and Bryce, to your point, why do they need to do uh, them as NFTs? Because the medium is the message. It, it, it defines you more. It makes you more of something to say, I bought this as an NFT because it's not the Soho House. It's not the country club. It is this specific online tribe and the, and the price to get into that. The, the definition of the tribe itself is through the purchase of these things. I Hey, can we stop knocking Soho House? It's a very nice establishment. <laughs> I'm not so, I really like good Soho lecture House. Series. I like it's Soho House. It's a nice, House. casual place to meet people. You know, it's it's just you know that mechanism, right? The mechanism of okay, uh, this we're we're building a social club that has X, you know, requirement to entry, or even the mechanism of I'm going to attach X as a part of my identity. Um, you know, I think that that's cool. I think that's really interesting. Um, and it's it's hard not to I it's hard not to look at it in terms of money grabs because I even see a lot of those uses as uh, disposable oh, or, or, it, or it, oh, it's it's it, it, I mean, it's it's a it's a land rush, brother. Like, and, like and, whenever, and, whenever there's I, a lot of money would, sloshing around, there's going to be a lot of people who are looking to pick I, it I up. Say that you know, th there's and so what's much feeding money into the money grab is the people who are eager for the identity. If you take those people away who want the identity and want to be part of this membership club, then all of a sudden your market collapses and, and are not collapsingly. But that's what I'm saying is like, yes, it's a money grab. And it's it's people you look at how quickly people are creating stuff. And I talk to people, you're 100 percent right. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying it's a money grab because there is a there are people out there who have some money or some, will put money into the system because of it. Oh, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I understand, you know speculative value just uh, yeah i don't know i would i would just think with so much money and if we're talking if we're saying you know okay well a lot of these bad actors are a big numbers thing then well where are where where is the blaze ball of blockchain where is the big where's the thing that makes us love it because where's the halo killer 
Right. Well, and, and I think that you've brought up a really good point uh, oh, no. uh, or, or something I've been thinking about obliquely, which is part of the problem is is not um, – the uh, uh, not the actions of the people in the in group because the people in the in group all understand cryptocurrency. They all understand uh, that they are on the precipice of a, uh, a society transforming uh, find. Unfor uh, uh, the frustration or the, the 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 confounding factor is how many people don't understand this world at all. And and um, you know imagine imagine if the four of us legitimately suddenly each had 50 million dollars a piece and it's real money but we don't we can only spend it with each other like it would look very silly to people on the outside that we are spending millions of dollars for <laughs> slices of pizza but there's only four of us here and yeah. and so yeah we look pretty silly but also i'm hungry and he's got that pizza right over there and yeah. it's also silly on survivor where people say you could either have this ten thousand dollar flat screen series or, or television or you could have a slice of pizza and they're all like yeah i'm really hungry right now and i would like that slice of pizza the TV doesn't even have Chromecast, so... <laughs> okay, yeah, also, it took place 20 years ago. Also, so, I'm yeah. almost positive that Andrew was setting up a totally separate topic, and this entire Sorry. segment started <laughs> because Brian yelled <laughs> cryptocurrency. Sorry, I think that's... Exactly it worked out well enough. <laughs> you know what else works out well enough is your support for us. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned that, Andrew. Patreon.com slash weird things is where you need to go right now. Literally, friends, 10 seconds is all that stands between you and a perilous fate if you you don't go to patreon.com slash weird things right minute. Are now. you just, sorry, the 10 seconds is the amount yep. of time it takes for you to stab them? Eight, nine. <laughs> yeah, no, oh my uh, God. Wait, uh, it was the opposite way. <laughs> talk, Hold on. talk about FOMO. Uh, I missed we, out we, on we, living. We're the clock to 30 <laughs> seconds because if you don't head on over there right now and get all the value you can unlock by becoming a paying Patreon of the Weird Things podcast, then indeed... <laughs> You will have a horrifying fate befall you, friends, and it gives me no pleasure to say that there is a dark, grim, grim future for you if you oh do not give goodness, us money, man. but it is my solemn duty. 29. Uh, I, 30. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, as, as one of the three, four co-hosts of the <laughs> Weird Things podcast, <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited. Happy to be back. <laughs> Elon Musk gave us an update Thursday on the status of Starship. Starship is the plans of Elon Musk and SpaceX to build a completely reusable spacecraft, which we've talked about at length here. And the progress so far, one of the biggest things comes down to is they're trying to build the, the Raptor engines, which is a radically new form of uh, engine architecture for SpaceX to do. And they've, they showed their version one and their version two and how, and how quickly they've iterated to get from one to the next. And it's been fascinating. Uh, I sent, uh, I forgot to send this to you, Bryce, but I sent out an article where somebody did some coverage where they spoke to somebody who is a consultant for other space companies. And he would only comment off the record about their reaction to what's been going on with SpaceX and they were quote doing something in bed. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were. They were. Uh, they were, they were, they were the blanking. Blanking the bed would be the phrase. Yes, yes, that was the expression. And then what? basically said that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I basically said you know later on like that they are they've been in kind of denial about this, but they're having to accept the reality that if this happens, that this is you know their. This might be, I mean, this might be game over. Uh, yeah, they, uh, this is this is uh, all of a sudden now a big, big, big slice of money falls away. Maybe we can context. Um, maybe we can come up with a hypothetical uh, uh, parable. Uh, imagine you worked at a company um, where you wanted to charge ten billion dollars to go to the moon, and it looks like somebody might be able to start offering tickets for ten million dollars. <laughs> And imagine yes. <laughs> if you do everything right, your $10 billion flight to the moon, you'll have four flights over the next 10 years, at which point 10 years from now, old Mr. $10 million a seat is uh, already has a colony. And I would imagine that you would um, have uh, uh, incontinence in bed. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, it reminds yeah. me of. Uh, I think we we even brought up uh, uh, Monty Python last week at on last week's episode too. But that the the beginning of Monty Python and the Search for the Holy Grail when uh, you know the the guy's doing his his uh uh like and and in medieval times like a modern documentary looks out into the into the field and all of a sudden from like very far away there's just like a guy going uh, and it just starts getting like closer and closer and closer until eventually yeah. he just chops his head off and then the guy's <laughs> wife is out like talking to the police uh that's what i would imagine let's name a fictional company like lockheed or boeing would uh uh, uh be looking at with spacex as it's like oh like Oh, 10 years ago, his guy doing a bunch of dumb stuff, lighting his money on fire, trying to be a rocket man. Oh, ha ha ha. And now it's like, oh, no, wait. Now, now we're now we're really at, at, at the point where some of these more speculative contracts are are being eaten up. And if, if, if you're not careful, some of the, the the even bigger money is going to go away because this is going to be so far ahead of you and so cheap that it's, you know. Uh, going to be hard to look at how you catch up. Yeah, it's. I think it's a good analogy. It's you thing you think is far away, and it's you know it was ten years ago that Elon Musk went to the floor of the National Press Club and announced that their plan to make a rocket reusable. Yeah. And then now, that's it. Did not take ten years to do that. We are now ten years in, and you know they're using their flight proven boosters go up ten or more times and stuff. And then now, I think what's scary is. When people in the Arkan industry look at what's going on at Starbase, uh, the, the facility in Texas, and they see that he's literally building the production lines now to produce an engine a day, they're literally building all of these starships to go test, and it's not like they have one vehicle that if it crashes, they're doomed, and it's not like, oh, we're going to run out of money next month now. Yeah, That's not SpaceX unless they get really start like, we need to build this out of cocaine. Um they're not in risk of that because there is, they have proven to enough groups and individuals who like to invest in outliers or you know high high risk bets. They're always going to have money. SpaceX is not going to run out of financing, even if it takes five years longer, because of the track record they have. They've earned that now. They've earned that. Yes, we solve these really hard problems. Not as soon as we like, but we solve them. And it's it's hard because it's like you get like oh you think we're gonna be there in the next five years maybe 10 that's still different timeline than, i mean yeah you know. but it's like it's like yeah they don't solve them as fast as 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 maybe you know whatever elon tweets uh, amongst the rest of his meme lord output but like uh, uh it's a breakneck pace for rocketry <laughs> it's a breakneck pace for uh, a, a, a space exploration at least again at the levels that we had come to expect from the people that were the standard bearers and they are the people that are now you know, worried. And I think justifiably worried because they, if, if, if they spent some of the time advancing their craft as much as the, the time and money as they spent trying to kill competitive contractors, then maybe they wouldn't be in the same situation that well, they're in right now. And it's the problem too, is that it, I think it's a lot of short sightedness. It's the early 1990s and thinking that the, the internet, well, there are only going to be two markets there. That's going to be selling internet routers and browsers. That's it. Yeah. That's what the internet will be. And if we're not selling a browser, we're doomed. If we're not selling internet routers, we're doomed. Guess what are two businesses did like would be maybe a hundredth down on the list of things that you'd want to get into at this point? Yeah. Uh, and, well, well and, and further than that, um, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm certain that we have personal friends who work at, at, at some of these companies that I, uh, what 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 must that do to your morale like how how does one feel seeing the the landscape and knowing that you're selling buggy whips and 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 watching henry ford off to the side you know like uh, like i i and it it well and stuff that's you know that you got incredible talent you got incredible talent working these other companies and, it, right. and it's a they they came about in the uh, and basically in the the government contracting world and defense contracting world, which is literally a system designed to not give you the thing that they want on the time they want or the money they want. And and people go, no, we we I'm like individually every person there is well intentioned and wants to deliver on time. I hundred percent believe that. 
that system is not designed to do that. No. You know, like the, the people, the people can, but like literally, oh, well, we only have two people who are checking on compliance. Why do you do that? Well, because when we only have two people who are checking on this, it ends up we make more money. Like, why do you make more money? Oh, because we end up getting more overrun. Like, there are all these things. These things just evolve to become inefficient. And it's not it, when people I get I get discussions with people like, oh, no, like, how, how why would you say this about it? I'm like, I'm not. It's not the people, it's the system. It's like the Catholic Church is really good at converting people to Catholicism. You know, like it's just these things do what they do. Uh, and the checks on the money are not there. Like the uh, uh, generally, politically speaking, uh, a senator's job is to say, I identified a problem and I care about that problem relative to the amount of money that I voted on putting toward it. It's very rarely. And then I kept up and checked all the receipts that were being produced from that project. And, and now I'm going to crack down on overruns because uh, my, my care extends to how that money is spent and how that money is applied. It, so like if, if there's always going to be room, if you care about, let's say space travel, there's always going to be room for that senator. Cool. I agreed on that. And I agreed on that so much that I cut another check for another gigantic yeah, amount of money. If you, if you're, you know, if I'm, you know, I'm Senator McOrange of Florida and yeah. I vote for a new Boeing, Boeing, Lockheed, whatever, new facility, you know, company to build stuff here. And I say, we need X amount of money for our, our send our humans to Pluto, you know, mission. And, it gets goes from one billion dollar plan to all of a sudden ten billion dollars, and I'm the senator that said yes on this. Nobody blames me because also that other nine billion came back to my state. I'm a hero. Yeah. Don't blame me. I voted for McOrange. Yep. So uh, Musk was talking about you know people ask like you know timeline. They're still waiting for approval for approval for the FAA as far as to being able to launch Starship from there. The FAA issued a statement today saying that we thought maybe we'd have a resolution in the next two weeks, but we're not. We have to wait another month because we have to wait for environmental impact in Boca Chica to see you know are they going to allow like regular rockets taking off from there. Elon explained they're back. They're out there, but they're building. They're building another launch facility in Cape Canaveral, Launch Pad Thirty Nine. So they're going to be building another one capable of doing Starship, and he plans to build a factory there. So he's, there, are people are like, "What happens if you can't get approval here?" It's like, then we'll just speed up the timeline there. He's like, "We're," he's like, "We're," you know, "We're going to keep going to there," and you know, at some point, you know, it's you know, well, I talked to the Navajo people, and you know, maybe we've got some land out in the middle of Four Corners. Uh, I'm making that up, but that could happen. Yeah. Somebody asked him, like, what about the first missions? What's coming next? He says, I don't want to steal the thunder for anybody, but you're going to be hearing about things. Well, guess what? We heard about something today. One of the first, the first customer, he's got D Moon, which we talked about before, but Polaris Dawn, the Polaris Dawn mission. You're like, Andrew, what is this? Well, remember Mr. Jared Isaacman, who brought a couple buddies up into Star, into Dragon Capsule? Remember they did the, the first privately crewed yeah. mission? Oh, yeah. yeah. SpaceX Dragon. He uh, apparently he's got more money to burn, and he's announced if you go to PolarisProgram.com, you can see their plan is they want to do a Dragon Crew Dragon, which is the the Falcon Nine launch one. They want to do a mission on there to test all sorts of stuff for human survivability in space. Then they plan on doing a the first mission in Starship to test its human life support capabilities. So they are paying for the privilege to be the first humans in. In Starship? Yep. Uh, wow. I wonder yep. well, uh, uh, talk about I, I wonder I wonder what that, that Venmo transaction looks like. <laughs> I wonder what the dollar figure on that one is. Uh I think for Isaacman 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 is doing what Bezos would probably be doing if he was a younger guy and wasn't still trying to run everything else. Like yeah. Isaacman looks at what Elon did. Isaacman's got a ton of money and is a very good organizer and he's like cool and this is the thing we're talking about before about these other companies like i'm not saying give up on building your own rockets like you know there's still going to be a market for that but if you say if if we have rapidly reusable rockets then what's next yes then, and don't say space hotels what is next and isaac's is like that i'll let elon build the rockets i'll raise the money to go on missions on them and try to push the science you know what uh so let's say you are at uh, a fictitious uh, behemoth of a company that is tr uh, accustomed to $10 billion missions instead of $10 million missions. Um, 
and let's say you don't have any reusable anything, uh, my branding brain kicks in and says, then you figure out immediately what you can do that nobody else can do. Like, for example, there are specialty missions where, like, uh, uh, where, where you would not use a commercial airliner, but you might use uh, a, a, a hang glider or a helicopter or a something else. You know, like, like no, nobody, you don't send a 737 to life flight somebody out of uh, the Andes Mountains. Uh, so in that case, uh, maybe what they do is they pivot to, hey, let's take our existing technology and prepare for the existential threat of a near Earth asteroid uh, possible collision or something. Where, well, where I would, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean that's that would be great. The remember is they they're not going to spend any money people aren't paying them to spend, right? And so that's part of the problem is that you know Elon Musk spent billions to develop Starship. He didn't. He had government contracts to help along the way at developing a Falcon, but when he started to do Starship, they had some little grants in the Air Force and stuff. It was literally them spending capital, making a bet on the future. These other organizations, they might go to the government, and like, Brian, what you're saying, like, absolutely. But you will see there are programs like this, redirect missions and stuff. They'll go to the government and say, will you pay us $500 million to do blank? Can we get money from you to do blank? They always have to go, they go try to sell the program to the government first, and then try to build it. Yeah. And and I think that but your point, like those kinds of things might be there might be a marker for that because you might get senators and people who are worried about like, OK, Elon Musk is a very interesting personality. Are we comfortable with having him being the sole major launch provider? And and there's always going to be other kinds of launches like high altitude and military stuff where they're like the, the, the Space Force wants to have multiple companies to deal. So there's always going to be a place for that. It gets harder and harder to justify it, though, like we saw with. NASA didn't want it to be dependent upon one provider to send astronauts to the space station. So that's why Boeing got money for the Starliner. And uh, let me check my watch. It's 2022 and Starliner has yet to carry people to the International Space Station. And they got paid like twice as much. Right, right. So, and, and, I, and I suppose that that opens up another avenue for speculation where it's like, um, uh, yeah, we cost 100 times as much but we absolutely positively will have it there overnight or something where it's like, mm -hmm. like, yes, it Military. is stupidly expensive to have this non-reusable rocket ready to go at all times for whatever pops into your mind at, mind at any moment. But, but uh, last time I checked, there's a bit of a line over at that other place. Yeah. Well, yeah, th that's that there's going to be a market for hundred percent. And that's kind of what the market is right now. And that there's the ULA is focusing. And if you listen to Tori Bruno, who's head of ULA and talk about what they offer and they talk about things like, here's where the altitude you can't get this to. This is what we're able to do. And we got this reliable system. The reliability thing has sort of lost its much of its argument now. Cause like the Falcon nine is the most like used rocket there's ever been now at this point, but there is that. But I would argue that if, we really start to think bigger. Like we're starting to see more private space stations under development. People are starting to think more about that. And when you think about building, I'm like, let's just build a big, huge research park in space because of all the material stuff. I think that's going to be, I think that's what it's going to be. Biomedical, all these technologies that could be potentially there. I think we're going to start seeing that by the end of this decade. People are going to realize like, oh, let's not build rockets. Let's build cities up there because of the science research. And the promise, the promise of a discovery could be enough to get trillions of investment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I also think, um, uh, and, and this is going to come out more dour than I intended to, because, uh, uh, I'm not thinking of all the things I don't know to think of, uh, but, but like, uh, preparing for a black swan event in space suddenly changes all the economics where it's like, like, yes, you're paying a lot of money for us so that if blank ever happens, and I said asteroid, but I'm sure there's other things we could think of. Uh, or, or let's say, um, uh, I guess another state actor or something does something. Uh, who knows? Whatever. It's, it's insurance and very expensive insurance, uh, but, but there's, there's value in it. 100% mm -hmm. agree. Uh, looking at the timeline of SpaceX, Crew Dragon did its first launch with people in April 2020 which is coming up soon will be two years ago and wow. Starliner. And there, remember there was this whole, who's going to get there first, maybe Boeing Starliner. Cause they've got, you know, like, Oh, they've got all this experience working on this. Like, like the guys building Starliner were the ones hammering out the Apollo craft. It's yeah. like, like it's 
well, the covering the average age of people in the aerospace industry, how it's like increased by like 30 years since then, there is a probability it could be that. That's one of the other problems too, is when you look at the average age of people in certain industries or certain companies and you go like, why are they so quick and fast? Like, well, there's a wealth of experience here. They know how to do a thing and they don't spend as so much time trying to figure it out. But this other group is very energized and isn't, you know, to under the same sort of like a daily time constraints. If that makes any yeah. sense about well, studying the ageist, but uh, <laughs> that is a big thing. That's one of the big things. Like the average average age of like people at NASA under Apollo was something like twenty eight. Average age at people at NASA now is like fifty something or whatever. Oh wow! Um, and you see this in like universities. Like if you look at the average age of an employee at a university, you know, thirty years ago it was being thirties. Now it's people in their fifties. It's like it's just different. People at different points of life are now running these things, and and it can be a sign of, and that's not a bad thing necessarily. If I have a lawyer, maybe my best lawyer, somebody who's got that much experience. If I have a doctor, I kind of want the guy that's not, you know, two weeks into the job and wants to try things. It's 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 not a old bad young good. It varies, but anyhow. Uh, so exciting. I think we're going to hear about more missions. Clearly he's got people, a lot of excited, a lot of people excited about this. Uh, one we're spacing. We talked about them before Astra, which had that, um, really was silly that knee jerk reaction when their rocket, um, had an abort while it was on the launch pad and you watched the stock just dive in the middle of the day. Yeah. And, uh, well, they had another mishap. Oh, um, so no. Was it as perfectly timed so, as and perfectly comical as the other one? This this Astro was and, the one that that had the exit stage left one. They right? just boogied on yeah. sideways, yeah. yeah. So then they had their the launch abort that failed, and then or the uh, the launch. Then finally, that rocket did launch, uh, but the fairings that cover the the cargo, the the, the upper stage rather, didn't open like you see video inside of there where they don't open and then all of a sudden the rocket thrusters kick on and the flare fairings just blow apart oh, and the Jesus. upper stage goes tumbling also so, instead of fuel it was jelly beans not a good thing for yeah. a rocket need this rocket stuff fuel is hard it's a Wait, joke this is really hard is, joke. Is, is is the joke that they're that they put jelly beans in the rocket incompetent? yeah i mean jelly beans really it was just no a funny they're not phrase. they're not yeah. at all yeah i was no, about to not, say not, like i'm trying to understand I'm the joke, joke. I mean, it's just we, it's just we a had, mr bean done the style thing. Foolery. Yeah. it's just like oh my god why did that go wrong <laughs> oh doug did you put jelly beans in instead of the jet fuel and meanwhile he's eating jet fuel and you're like <laughs> like oh no not again <laughs> I gotta protect my steel beams. Exactly. <laughs> so when can we when can we go watch your launch? You all just let that one when, slide. When are we gonna see huh? You gotta call me out yeah. every time. Oh, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> El Nino 911. Uh, <laughs> Astra is a team of 126 people. They've been at this. They were founded in 2016, so they're relatively new. They're just over five years. Not even reached their their sixth birthday yet. Yeah. Um. They're working with, you know, what resources they have on hand. And I think that everything's super visual now, which is exciting and frustrating because, you know, when you're streaming your launches, you get to see this thing not work in real time. Um, I, uh, you know, these small things, SpaceX had its share and everybody oh, yeah. has their share of it. And so I think that from a fundamental point of view, like the, the rocket engine's working, the really hard stuff kind of seems to be working guys so i'm, yeah. I'm like keep at it keep at I it mean, well, and, know, and to, like... to kind of take the conversation full circle we're kind of back to the um look man uh, uh, in in the growth development phase you got to go through that phase where you blow up a lot of rockets we saw nasa do it we saw spacex do, do it and i'm thrilled to see uh, uh more and more companies going through that phase yep so i it makes for sort of fun comic relief to an extent, but we talked about before, like for the people working there, like, listen, like we're, we're, it's, uh, we're paying attention. We're watching what you're doing. And we appreciate the fact of, that you're pushing the envelope and trying to do something different. And it's hard. Salute. It's really, really hard. Salute so. to Astra. Yep. Keep, keep on trucking. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Gentlemen, you want to do picks? Uh, yeah, dude. You ever, you ever have a million dollar idea and then, uh, 
You go look it up, and somebody two years ago had the same million idea, dollar idea, only they're actually about to make a million dollars. Uh, that happened last night. Last, last night, I had an idea, and uh, as a matter of fact, time-sensitive reminders. Tell Corey and Justin about your Wikipedia sleepcast, starting with an exciting and cool fact summary, and then reading that gets slower and slower and slower until you fall asleep. My idea, my thought last night, because the problem with all those sleep casts is you have to decide. There's that moment you have to hit go. I want to listen to something so boring it'll put me to sleep. So the trick is you tell yourself, no, I'm going to hit go. I'm going to learn. I'll show you. I'm going to stay awake. Oh, oh, and then you fall asleep because somebody's just reading Wikipedia articles. Turns out somebody had that same idea two years ago, is now two years into their podcast, and uh, last night I listened to the latest episode, and he said, hey, just so you know, tonight we're going to learn about Heath Ledger, but the whole podcast is about to go away because I'm going to make an app made up of all of these episodes, so Wikisleep is going to be better than ever, and I hope that dude makes all the money in the world because I'll tell you what, man, I could tell you a little bit about Heath Ledger that I didn't know yesterday morning, but not the entire story. Because <laughs> I definitely fell asleep. It's, it's great. I, That's cool. That's clever. I had, uh, you know, you, you go through that phase when you first uh, have ideas, and we're like, oh, ideas, you know, I have an idea, I have an idea, and then you realize everything starts as an idea, and then the real hard part is like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to build a podcast studio in Texas, Brian. What do you think about that? <laughs> oh, man, that seems like an efficient way, especially if you could, like, fly in talent using only airline miles yeah. that you've accrued I'm, over a 30-year career. I'm going to do mine, but I'm, I'm going to do mine in Houston. It's yeah. a different idea. I mean, I mean, no. And all you're seeing, all you're like, let's say you're like, good luck. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. It's like I hear like ah oh, someone because I had from people I know people raise money like oh we just raised two million dollars of venture capital do this stuff like okay you're gonna be able to throw kind of a cool party but not really too big one because your VCs are gonna be looking at that money <laughs> two you you didn't get nobody just put two million dollars into your bank account and said yeah we trust you do it you if you you know also like you're now gonna feel guilty about what you pay yourself in payroll you actually have this sort of chain around your neck now because it's see, people are like oh they made two million no they did not make two million. No. They were given the keys to two million and some people standing around watching them how they spend it. And now they've got to go, D do I hire this person? Do you think I should hire this person? Should I hire that person? I don't know. And then well, and, and th there um, was this weird moment of uh, confused uh, self-reflection where I had to ask, like, am I jealous he thought of it first or am I happy that it already exists and has two years of development on me. <laughs> and, and it turns out I'm more happy because uh, that's a, it, it turns out I got all the validation of knowing it was a good idea and don't have to lift a finger. I mean, on the other side, seems like the podcast market for this just opened up. Uh, okay, well, that was yeah. maybe the second yeah. thought that I had. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I think that I, money man. <laughs> and that is, and, and Brian, to like, there is... The whole idea of listen to this while you sleep, help you sleep, and may help you learn is decades old. So, you know, you're not, if you're like, oh, I want to pursue your take on that. Like, well, congratulations. That's, you're, you're, you're going into a field that's very well established. I remember having conversations in high school with my friend's dad, who was a psychologist, about like, you know, audio books, audio tapes at the time and sleep and stuff. And can you learn? Can you do this? Oh, Whatever. No, 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 no. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with uh, learning in your sleep or anything like that. To me, to help uh, you go to sleep. No, I. Oh, go, sorry. Well, go ahead. I, well, yeah, I, I get it's not. We know sleep learning doesn't work. But my point was that that my point, though, was the idea of people using them as a way to relax and go to sleep. I was I had the idea a week ago. I told a friend, I'm like, man, like, I think I might just write books that start and don't finish because I keep listening to the same audiobook every night over and over again. I have to restart <laughs> it. <'cause... laughs> oh, dang it. Why is why, what's, what's why does it keep happening? Well, I don't know. Andrew was on. He was on a heater. He was on a runner. Oh, sorry. Okay. Hello. I, I was saying, like, all I wanted was an audible that was just like books that start and then fade away because I often never finish a book on audible when I go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think your your idea is interesting because uh, we are now in kind of a renaissance for, I mean, any, I, I found this out when I had my back injury and, and sleeping all of a sudden, which had come very easy to me, became very hard. Right. I, I immediately realized that there are a few things in life for which if you are afflicted by them, you will pay or do any amount of money or anything possible to remedy and sleep is maybe among the biggest uh, uh 100% there's that moment where you think like uh genie pops up and it's like okay you can sleep every night but you'll lose some number of years of your life will it be uh 20 years i'm like yes that's enough <laughs> yeah <laughs> here's a no 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 like, negotiation like, like, yeah exactly like, i like... was gonna go down to three <laughs> yeah. but the 20 is still on the table <laughs> cool exactly yeah, give me that uh, uh, but, but yeah, that, that the idea now is that it is choice paralysis and it's like, well, do I really like Sam Elliott enough to listen to him read 40 different cowboy stories? Like, eh, maybe, maybe I don't, but for you, it's, it was it's like that lie because, because it was like, like, it was like, Oh wait, no, I would actually, I'll always hit this button because I could learn a bunch of bar trivia uh, uh, right as I fade to sleep. And so that's going to be more worthwhile than Sam Elliott cowboy stories or Jeff Goldblum or, or, or listening the to the Mars buggy on headspace for the millionth time. It's like, yeah, I know I learned three facts about how far Mars is from earth, whatever. Yeah. But, but uh, a constant stream of that it's interesting. Hey, uh, uh, I, I like a show on the streaming platform, HBO max. HBO Max. The Peacemaker. It's my favorite thing. It's so fun. I like it. I was shocked to hear, Andrew, did you know this? That uh, they shot five episodes with another actor as the vigilante, his uh, Peacemaker sidekick, and then went back, recast it, and reshot all of the vigilante scenes from the first five episodes uh because I did not know that they had they had creative differences with the uh with 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 the other actor uh which is I think the, Yeah, the guy that got he's amazing. He's like I think he's like the best on the show. He's so just, good. He's got this he's got this barely suppressed smile the whole time. Like even as he goes into his bonkers irrational, you know, arguments and you could tell that that you could play this as a guy who cares deeply about being specifically right about things, but instead he's just got this bemused aura about him, uh, and it's mainly in the eyes. I don't know exactly what it is, but I just love There's, it. It puts me at ease in 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 all those moments. It's he great. has all of the earnestness of your most delightful Mormon friend and all of the empty emotioned reasoning of a sociopath. Yes. Like it is, it is, it is so great. It's such a great James Gunn character. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, finale this week and man, I, I, I don't know what my expectations were going into it, but uh, it has only just layered uh, more and more awesome on top of uh, 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 everything. It's just what what a what a win, and and also without getting into spoilers, I just love that James Gunn makes things hurt, and not in a way that like Joss Whedon was famous for like randomly taking something away from you, uh, and that being like his his way to keep you on your toes was just ah now a character's gone or now. Uh, but also, like, when in James Gunn stuff, like, when somebody dies, they kind of die. Like, when, when, when something's taken away, it, it changes the story. And, and I think in television in general, that has a, a, a habit of kind of rewriting over its mistakes and dead characters come back to life or they're... And suddenly you're ruling with respect. And, yeah. <laughs> Get me started. Get me started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing I like the most about it is that they don't strip every ounce of agency out of uh out of out of, out of uh, any any decision that any of the main characters make uh anyway so peacemaker i like it i like peacemaker the the intro doesn't do anything for me 
Oh, you. I know. You, it's I'm a Grinch. Bitch. No, I'm the you, Grinch. you are. This is a this is a Hall of Fame <laughs> Grinch thing. Like, just this one little ray of sunshine that everybody loves, and Bryce <laughs> just has to run into, just run into this room, a full-on party is happening, this- and just says, ah, He's, uh, I don't like the punch. He's uh, <laughs> he's in good company. My 17-year-old daughter Penelope said pretty much the same thing. She's like, <gasps> it's so weird because every element of this I should like. The show's incredible. Um, the show but, is... But this... I, it just, uh, this intro does literally nothing for me. It does, it's, I just, all right, whatever. Go, is, go, is it the try, is it the, the fact that they're trying too hard? Like, they're, it's the effort that, 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 and well, sets you off. And no, it's it's you it's know, long, and I don't think that they put it. I mean, it's a very uh, there's there's a lot of work they put into it, but I I don't think any. I don't know I, what I'm supposed to feel watching it. It reminds me I, of the I, I a smile, you crusty old crone. <laughs> That's what you're can supposed I, to feel. Can I just say something? Yeah. Can I just say something? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just for context, uh. Abrams has his his crowd pleasing lens flares that we all look forward to, and we're like, please, JJ, if you don't put some lens flares in there, I'm going to be disappointed because it just makes the scene and pulls the drama together. Uh, Spike Lee had his like rolling camp, walk people standing still but being pulled forward to the camera. He he's yep. got his little trademark like that. Mm. Uh, Tarantino maybe has his feet. Uh, <laughs> Gun's got his Gun's got his dance numbers. Everything he, he does, does get a dance number. Yeah. And he so loves, by doing this, hmm. we don't have to have them break out to song and dance in the middle of every episode. Yeah, I guess. I and I think I um I I am a Grinch. I, I am a Grinch. I am a Grinch. But also like m- when I see musical numbers in movies or TV now, I feel like uh I feel like every CG like kid animated movie I've seen for the past 10 or 15 years has to have a dance party or a dance sequence at the end. It has to end in a big dance celebration. It's very never go to India. And (laughs) (laughs) it's weird. It's weird when 60 minutes in India, when they just break out of the dance. (laughs) It's real. I've got a pick. This is very, uh, this is a weird one because I went to go look for like uh, information or a page to tell you about this great cool thing, and there um, is not any. And it's interesting because so I was on vacation last week, uh, and a lot of people involved, a lot of people with phones, a lot of people taking photos and stuff. And uh, I thought, oh my gosh, like almost all of us have iPhones. Let's try and share photos. Uh, with the Photos app, you know, the built-in photo. It's built in. I'm paying for iCloud stuff. Almost everyone's got it. And I'll be gosh darned if it didn't work pretty well. Um, it, 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 we, the last, when I was, when I went to Arizona last year, it was a lot of text me that. Oh, text me that. Oh, send me that. Oh, send me that. Oh, send me that. Um, and now to just be like, hey, here's the text message. Click it on your phone. You now just have it. And and so not only like does it show up for people in in their photos app on their phone if they want it but they have like a public link so that you can just share it with the oh. family who have um androids check the fit um, <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't know it just does nothing for me <laughs> Just yeah, it just bit. seems like Beanie Babies. So just kind of what, what, like... you, you collect a bunch of photos. Uh, I don't get it. I don't, I don't know. It. It's just not connecting <laughs> with me. It's just not. Sorry. Uh, so uh, I'm a great. 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 Go Maybe bear I'm bag. too old. I'm some yeah. kind of audio elder. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it it was very interesting that we could you know go and capture these moments and uh, share them. It, all of my dad just uploaded every image like i almost just showed you their house okay. uh, <laughs> welcome to doxing things so, so that's a weird little bit of it because it, um i don't know if you've ever have any of the three of you used the shared albums i have ep- not no on ios uh you know what's funny is i think one person shared an album with me from five years ago and uh and when i there. go to albums it's still it's like him working on a car <laughs> but but you know what's I I had that too. I have oh, a yeah, buddy like, like like when they first came like ten years ago that like uh, friend from high school we have this thing ah oh, 
R- reminder of this album. You guys could add a photo here if you wanted. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, cool. what's interesting is that the way that the shared albums work and the way that it's been built out over the years, like there is a secret social network hiding right here. Like if people yeah. had the wherewithal and got over the 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 issue of it being iOS only, um, it's if they got... would just get over the fact that the app to, <laughs> that you have no choice of what phone to have, God, a bunch of babies. Not even being. Uh, no, I, yes, I, but, I, 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 I mean, I, I, I agree. It could be better, and it's also like not a popular thing apparently. But you can leave comments. You, multiple people can upload images. You can save stuff for offline. You can uh, like comment. You can control what's in there, and I, I just, I, it, it was so easy, and I'm, I, I just thought like, oh my gosh, I can have a. I could have one for the trivia group, and we can talk about trivia stuff there. The our Wordle group could have one, and it just goes there. Uh, you know, my I, family would love to see photos of me, and I don't call them enough, so we could have that, and they could get a little. Hey, here's a picture from Bright. I, I think yeah. it was Justin uh, uh, was the first person that I'd heard position the group chat stuff as a secret social network of like four, four, oh, yeah. four or five years ago. No, yeah. I think, I think especially as like the chat as a platform stuff was really hot, like five years ago that like, if you think of just iChat or, or iMessage, whatever, whatever it's called as a social network, it's an yeah. massive and, and, and undeniable uh, platform. But I think it's, it's Apple's, you know, one of Apple's inherent, uh, uh, weaknesses has for a long time been reliability of services. Uh, uh, and, and I, I do think that that could be built out more. So mm-hmm. it was easier, uh, to do stuff because the way that it works now it's is clunky. that you, you often find a new feature on your iPhone accidentally. You just like <laughs> accidentally hold your finger on a button too long. And it's like, Oh, would you like to alert all your friends that this thing is there? And you're like, Oh, I, I could do I that. Yes, yeah. maybe. And then it works once, and then you try it a second time, and it's like uh, all of your old contacts have <laughs> just deleted everything on your phone, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. like, well, that'll that'll learn me. And I, you know, it's it's so fascinating because using it, I understand. You know, I'm I'm a technical person. I I did not have much trouble using it, and I you know, to my eyes, that's like kind of perfect like it's built into their phones they just do a thing they can see it even if they're not on the iphone yeah and if if this is a thing that people want which is to like share images with each other and have a you know have a social media or a, a, a networking element with commenting whatever like that is a big sleeper and i'm really surprised people don't do it more i would i and i would like to dive in and see if people may if people are using it or if not, because I mean, here's the great the thing that makes it great is you could ask Apple and they will remain silent on an answer, <laughs> which is why people like it. And, and you know, to, to, to something that you said earlier, Justin, like if the point of social media is to get two people to talk to each other and have a good conversation, this is perfect. That's yeah. It, it, uh, it, 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 that's but, not the point of social media, right? The point of social media is to create impressions so w- for which you can sell ads. The against. point of the business is to do that. Yes, which is the reason why it exists. Now you're right. Mm, the okay. feature that but, we want that sure. we that we might believe we are getting is human connection, uh, either from friends or strangers, for which uh, uh, you can you can have these these things, and that's where I think the soft idea of a social network, not mass communication, not influencing, but rather yeah. How can we better interact with each other? That's that is a lane for Apple because they are selling the safe harbor. Buy yeah. our phone and have this yeah. better life, free from the expectation that we are going to try to monetize you. And they're kind of perfectly positioned for it, other than the the platform thing. Or rather, or rather, we are monetizing you on the way in. Right, right exactly. Is that people know that? Like, give you, me, give you me pay your a money. lot, and then Apple. Hey, Apple is making iPhoto netbook. And you don't pay anything. We don't put ads on it. You just share pictures and leave comments and yeah. give thumbs up. And that's all it is. Because totally your dad forgets that he hasn't stopped uploading. And, uh, you know, now you're taking a you're looking at a picture of a mole that you're I, trying to send to his doctor. I had to delete some photos before I shared that album. with <laughs> <laughs> But I, I just thought it was very cool. And if you're in a position where, hey, 
I'm sure your parents would like to get photos. And if you've talked them into having an iPhone, I'm sure they would love a little thing on their phone that says, hey, here's a new photo from child. Here we so, go. There you go. Andrew? I I just want to add that I love Apple, but it does get frustrating because, like, you know, when we started with phones, they weren't supposed to be as sophisticated as computers, but then we wanted more features and sophistication, which is understandably so. And then, you know, now I get to a point where I sit down, I'm trying to write, and I get an alert on my iMac, like, hey, we detected your AirPods. I'm like, oh I think I saw God. a setting where I Dude, could say, like, don't do you this. You can't walk 20 feet. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 I love oh, my right? Raycons. Um, <laughs> I wish it would show the connect button more. Mine don't switch fast no, enough. I, mine the say that they are lost when yes. they are definitely not lost. One, oh, yeah, one AirPod, that. it yes. keeps saying, you just left it in this other place you Time were. Sensitive. And it's like, no, I didn't. It's in my pocket, you ding dong. Yeah. Yeah, that, like they need I sit that. here in front of my computer and I don't move. I'm other than my head a bit, and every now and then, hey, you, you AirPods, you want to? I'm like, you know, I've been here for the last f an hour. I'm pretty good, pretty mm -hmm. good. Listen to my phone. I don't think I need to do this right now. I, it's cool. And then, I I wish that they had the connect button more because there's not an easy way to there's if you don't connect it, there's not an easy way to do it on your own. Or I mean, it's not as hard. It doesn't take as long as Bluetooth, but it's. It's a whole. I gotta go to the control center. I gotta go to the thing. I gotta pick the source. I, and I, gotta... I hear you. I I just think that like because I have I have three active Apple devices right around me. Right, I think my yeah. I have four Apple devices right here. Having that pop up all the time. Yeah. yeah. When I'm doing a task, I'm connected to a thing, and I and I know like I'm like oh, there's a setting like. There's not, it ain't no universal setting, and I'm pretty sure I set up my Mac, and I'm pretty sure after an update or something, this thing went back, and so. Those are thing, and I will be in meetings. I'll be in like meetings and talking to somebody. Da 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 da, and I'll see the audio just went to my phone. Yeah. And oh, I'm that's like, the worst. Ah, it's, this is great. Yeah. In that I work with former people that were at Apple. I let them hear it, and it has not their fault at all. It had nothing to do with it. But it's I still, would get it. Oh, I, Apple. Well, I'm gonna, yeah. you know, I'm gonna yell at you like a cashier here. <laughs> I, I would happily Let me press see your manager. I would happily press one button every time. Than all of the times when I needed to press a button and I could not. But press the one. problem is not the button; it's when it keeps popping up and no. But that's what you. I'm. I'm hey, I, 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 I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> Just yeah. uh, to put, I agree with you. If that was not the workflow, if there was a button or something else. What's your pick, Andrew? Yeah. What's your pick, Andrew? AirPods, actually. No. Um, hey! uh, <laughs> Uh, I did, I did just to, cause I'm always like my, my preferred device isn't actually my phone. It's actually my iPad. And I got, I have the, I have the iPad pro, the pencil, which I love, but then I use, I got an iPad mini just cause I found myself sometimes sitting there wanting just something casual. So the iPad mini is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I, pretty cool. I've had two or three minis over the years and I think that they're great. I think they're a really yeah. cool size. Um, and if you want to take it on the go, it is very akin to a large iPhone. And the new, the new ones with the the larger screen area, and you know they have the pro features. It's what I like. So I had the first mini, which I dug. I thought it was a perfect, a great form factor. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, do I want to get one again? And I got. I'm like, oh no, this is really nice. I have to you know put on my reading glasses, you know, when I need to use it. But uh, <laughs> yeah. And the, other than that, the, I switched to the bigger iPad Air because the phones got bigger. I probably would have kept the mini if the yeah. phones didn't keep getting bigger, but I didn't, it was so close in size to the same thing and they weigh the same, the air compared to the mini at the time. So I might as well just yeah. get a bigger screen and yeah, but uh, the mini, the mini is a great size. And I'm open to like, I think what's exciting too is that, uh, you can get, you can get a hundred dollar Android tablet and it's going to be great. It'll it, compared to where things were before, you know, the, the, oh, yeah. all of these things are really good. I have the latest Pixel phone, which, you know, I mess around with stuff. It's good. I don't like the design that much, but, you know, the features and capabilities on there, it's like, I get why there are people who like it. I, like, prefer the iOS system as, you know, frustrating sometimes it can be, but I get it, and we're in a very lucky place. Indeed. Nice. It's been weird. Hey, there we go. All righty, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us for Weird Things. We're going to take a few minutes, and... Uh, uh, do some after things. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Yo. Did you have a good weekend? I did. Nice. Uh, went, uh, went to, 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 to the Corpus Christi 
Oh, cool. We how, uh, how we that? did a uh, uh, overdue uh, graduation gift weekend for Penelope. Oh. Uh, and I, I, we were starting to fill out the whole program, so I didn't jump in on your um, evangelizing on, on texting parents or stuff. Like, that was the lifeblood, because my parents have Android devices, so mm. it's just an old school MMS group chat. Yeah. But, but, but man, oh man, did I love taking amazing photos and, and just hooking up uh, uh, mom and dad with them and getting their responses and stuff. I, hmm. uh, I, 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 here, let me, let me, uh, I'm, I'm gonna select a few. Yeah. You know what, uh, let, let me make you an album. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna select some photos. Great. Uh, these are all real photos. They're not fake photos. Oh. Uh, uh, here's a fish with an underbite, a couple of seahorses. Ooh. Some jellyfish. Oh, jellyfish. Here's a, here's some, uh, uh, oh, you want to see uh, Penny Flash in the Diamond Club symbol with sharks? Yes. Okay. Yes, all right. Let me, let me throw some of that in there. Okay. All right. So now what do I do? Uh, I'm going to put them. Share. Go to, I hit the share button. Uh, yep. Okay. There. Well, I can airdrop shared. them to you. Oh, you can airdrop them to me. You can create a shared album. Okay. Uh, add to shared album. Uh, so you'll have to name the album. Cool. Price shares. Hey, price shares. There we go. Shared album it says family. Uh, no. Wait, I want. Wait, it's oh, yeah. I I almost posted it to shared album family. Oh yeah, don't do that. You'll want to make a new. Oh, new shared album. New shared album. That's it. Hey, Bryce. Hey. There we go. There we go. Uh, you know what? Auto corrected it to Bruce. I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> There you go. Perfect. To Bryce. Okay, this is starting to feel like work. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's like once you get once you do it, it just takes a second. Cause this is <laughs> Hey Bruce is the name of the shared trap. Okay. Theoretically you have it. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see here. This is why. I think we're I think we're but, real time. Uh, but, <laughs> but uh Oh, here we go. Brian Brushwood, all caps, invited you to join. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> I'm going to click accept. Here we go. The hell did I miss? I joined oh, hey, look, oh. she's given the time a club. Oh, oh wait, here, can, can, can you share it with Justin? Uh, No, I'm not allowed to invite people. Oh. Okay, well, here. I, uh, I don't think. Uh, let me do this. I'll... Oh, wait, yes, I can. Oh, no, okay. no, I cannot. You uh, have, well, which one is? I can't. Okay, I can't. Right. <laughs> how do I? How do I invite? Oh, wait. <laughs> nope. I so uh, next invite to the select people, button. people. Hey, next, Justin. Yeah, next to the select button, there's a. There you I go. Need hey, man. You you want to be in? Hey, Bruce. <laughs> Done. Oh, hey, Bruce. <laughs> I'm accepting it. Okay. Get ready for some photos, like you wouldn't believe. That fish has a crazy underbite. Holy crap, man. There's a lot of, uh... Oh, you want to know what? I did share an album. <laughs> it was an album of Cleveland. It was Dark Side of the Moon. The year was 1977. Do, 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 do. Did you see Penny flashing diamonds with the shark? No. Oh, go the other way. Oh. Upper right, I think. Oh, look at that. Look at that. With the shark. Hey, Bruce. Who's Bruce? <laughs> it's autocorrected Bryce. Oh. I decided to leave it. <laughs> oh, wow. And I got an email that you just subscribed to. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> Dude, has anybody done that? Like, use their Twitter platforms or whatever to just say, hey, man, if you're on the iCloud. Go ahead, everyone share this album. It's my own private Instagram feed. Straight over iCloud. I mean, some somebody, like, 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 by law of averages, somebody has done it, but I don't know if anybody's become notable for it. Yeah. I don't know if Apple's really designed for that. It's, it's more to frustrate I mean, your if, friends and family than to frustrate strangers. Yep. Yeah, no, no, well, but I mean, like, like if, if I, let's say, like for all I know right now, I have to individually invite everyone. But let's say I didn't. Let's say you could invite anyone, yeah. and anybody you know could invite anyone. And then before you know it, just whatever I put in that album. I mean, I think really the 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 drive to do that kind of thing really was was kind of the uh, uh, Discord. 
you know, like like Discord is kind of like the 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 end point of trying to make that a consumer product. Right. Well, so although mean, they are less image focused. Meanwhile, is uh, you you were talking about accidentally posting to it. Uh, do I now have to be worried about whether or not Hey Bruce is going to get this photo of? No, no, no. Everything. It's um, my dad got confused because I also put him on my iCloud as a family member. Oh, and so. Oh, well, that was your first mistake. Yeah. Um, and so never, you, you, never you have trust to, your family. You, you, you have to go through that kind of posting process to post anything. So you won't. You shouldn't be confused by it. But it's. I don't know. With I just see the with how many people have like meme accounts that there's not more like hey here's our shared uh, you know here are the shared memes because you like do everything on the phone. Could be a private joke. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. To to me, it's it's. You know, it's a good time. Yeah, it's a, and it is a little bit of work to be the host. What's your but, what, what's your what's your snack there, man? What are oh, you snacking on? You have a jerky, a little jerky. jerky boy? And some beef uh, beef stick. Nice. Make it some chef's choice or something. Cool. Nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna thumbs up this sun. I had bacon set. 2 a.m. last night, guys. Woke up, I was hungry. Oh, I was kind of sleepy. I was watching some the the Wolverine, the James Mangold, Hugh Jackman Wolverine outing before they did Logan. Yeah. I'm hungry. I'm on, I'm on bacon. So I had bacon at 2 a.m. Fried up? Like, just out of nowhere at 2 a.m.? Yeah, I didn't eat a raw. Like, yeah. what do you think I'm... Yeah. Well, I don't know. You might have had bacon already cooked, like, from earlier in the day or something like that. You know, and that's my whole thing. Anybody feels depressed, get, like, a big thing of bacon <laughs> and, like, just cook it up, and you're a bacon millionaire. You could be, like, you have a Ziploc full of bacon and be, like, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk do not have this right now. Dude, uh, you can but when walk I was to a party, hey everybody, I got bacon. When I when I was first at a college and I was living with my friends in New York uh, or in Hoboken, and um, I, every Sunday, my buddy Matt and and it was only the three of us that lived in this apartment, just cook a pound of bacon or whatever whatever the standard unit of you know you get it in the store, just all of it every every Saturday, and that plate of bacon would just sit there and I, I never lasted more than maybe an hour and a half. Oh, like good. eventually it would just all get demolished. Like there's just nothing that is happier than just a gigantic pile of bacon. Like just copious bacon is so good. Meat cooked in fat. Even when it's in like, like you're at like some sad breakfast buffet or something like that. And it's just a brick of that, a brick of that bacon. It's always, it's always worth it. It's always good. Yeah, I, I last time I made up like a big bag of bacon, put it in my refrigerator. I just open up the refrigerator and stare at it with pride. Mm. You know, like Scrooge McDuck and his vault full of money. I'm like, this is better <laughs> than my Robin Hood. This is like my my bacon reservoir <laughs> you should you should like throw it on like a table like it's a drug deal <laughs> like yeah i got the stuff plop big old plastic bag oh, of I bacon bet, i got a test i gotta I taste bet, it take out a knife <laughs> i bet back in high school i probably could have you could probably could have done like a buck a bag of bacon or something like, you probably oh probably hell yeah right. oh wow oh dude if you were moving bacon in high school <laughs> that would be <laughs> that would be dope hey man can i get a can I get an eight ball of pig? Let me get a strip. Can I get an eight ball of Let pig? Let me get a strip. Let me get the pig. That's the, when you walk, if you walk down the alleyway and you hear. Yeah, you, you know. It's either you ruffians know. or it's javelinas. Someone's dealing bacon. <laughs> either that or they hate the police. <laughs> it's a multi, it's a multi, it's a, it's a multifaceted sound in action. Okay. Okay. Um, already does everybody um have an after things in them yeah let's get after these things i was busy leaving a comment on my new private instagram with brian and justin hey bruce hey bruce hey bruce i didn't get a thing uh i, I don't know how it works <laughs> <laughs> brian might have got a thing that i left him a comment i don't oh there's comments yeah you can leave a comment. oh wait i did i just have oh great oh. more notifications okay it's you're, you're keeping in touch with your loved ones, you know. Remember ten years ago when? Oh, I'm, I gave that. I gave it a thumbs up. Oh man, you know what? I'm gonna give it a thumbs down. Well, you know, it you used can to give be, it a thumbs down. Remember? I don't know. How did you give it a thumbs up? The digital photo frame, and you'd say, "Oh, Nana, we're gonna get you the digital." Photo. And whenever we do 
When we ever email photo flower, your photos will go on the photo frame automatically. Oh, by the way, I do that. I got a sky bridge for my mom and she loves it. Yeah. <laughs> she does. Does it hook into iOS photos app? No. Damn it. Although it is, it is lame. Like they, they are definitely like there to nickel and dime you. And they're like, Hey, would you like to leave a comment or something like that? And I'm like, Oh, I will. It's like pay me money per month. Mm. That's what you do here. Give me your money right now. So you can what talk to your that? mom. Skybridge. Sounds uh, great. Sounds lovely. Uh, but uh, it, the, the core functionality still works, which is that it's a plugged in little cheapo iPad that looks like a photo frame that just you just email a photo to it. It's like a specialized email and it just pops up. And so my mom periodically, it was so adorable when we first gave it to her. She was here in Austin and she would just unplug the photo frame from where she was and just bring it to the next room she was sitting in and, oh. just, uh, and just plug the photo frame back in as my... <laughs> As my uh, uh, sister-in-law uh, would just upload copious pictures of of their grandkids. Yeah, I was grandkids. just saying, it can't be of you. It's got to be some baby there or something. Oh no, like... yeah, I I make vanishingly little appearances on it. It's mostly All for right. my brother uh, and and. No uh, offense. Oh, I'm like, yeah. oh my god, no, no, my no. mom is Skybridge, and she moves it from room. To, I'm like, this is not. I know you and your mom are tied. No, but no, 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 like, no. This is not every the every once in a while. Justin <laughs> podcasting. Yeah, every every <laughs> once in a while, it's a very cleaned up photo of ashley and i doing something fancy and uh 99 yeah. of it are they, pictures the of... ashley part makes sense now like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the rest of it is just uh uh, uh cute kid pics yeah hmm. all righty what is this called again sky bridge sky bridge frame i believe oh huh. hmm. that's like that concept has grand grandparents written skylight 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 frame skylight frame skylight frame Skylight, that's it. Yeah, Skylight. That's it. Skype. Skype light. Skype light. Um, all right. Well, uh, there we go. Would we like to do some after things? Let's do it. Ready. All right. Andrew, I'll count you down in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast After Show. After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. A after Brian hello. Brushwood. I love we're weird things. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Uh, also after hello, because I'm saying hello after, I said after, after hello. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> hey, Bruce. Thumbs up. I don't think this is a really good work environment. Um, I feel like I'm being bullied right now. Delete comment. So. Yeah. Yeah. Please no, report. There's a secret. There's Eject. I like it. Our our tiny in group. There's an, even an in group in there with their oh, own secret well, chat. Well, while you were out of the room, we uh, uh, tested. Uh, yeah, we've never done this before. Have you uh, not invited Andrew to Hey Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> you need to invite yeah, Andrew to Hey Bruce oh, right oh, now. No. Hey oh, Bruce, oh, wow. Wow. I, that's oh, disgusting. Yeah. You didn't that's... invite him to Hey Bruce. <laughs> I didn't even want to invite you. Wow. wow. <laughs> well, number that's one, great. we need to rectify that. There's a private <laughs> iCloud uh, photo album called Hey Bruce because Brian tried to type Won't hey Bryce it and them. it auto completed to Bruce <laughs> and so I now it's it. become the most coveted cool thing that in the world it's hyper exclusive yeah, hyper exclusive 16 year olds oh, are yeah. paying $500,000 to get into yeah. it to get into hey Bruce uh, I think I'm just gonna click decline <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool feature it's, cool. it's a cool feature make your own to be there network. for hey Bruce be there the fair. Hey, Bruce. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, man. <laughs> you well, know, what's look, funny, what's funny is I, I just realized professionally. I just realized this is totally going to be a running gag now. Is like we're going to be sending meme photos to each uh, other nope. on this thing. Nope. Hey. No, it's not going to happen. Are it's you like, sure? Hey, do we got a topic for people? What's up with everybody going on these days? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's I mean, going on with everybody these days? If we want to talk about like, I mean, what's on the, you know, the minds of everybody right now, like yeah. who watched the Doctor Strange trailer. I did, and I did not catch the crossover reference. Um, I I did not find that voice so instantly recognizable that I rec recognized it. Are we into spoiler? We're into spoiler territory. Hey, I, 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 For a trailer, I, I, no. I, re I refuse to engage no. in in spoiler free trailers. <laughs> 
If it's in, if it's a trailer, <laughs> it is a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's like, I've. I've gone down the road with you. As a, a certain as a certain on, on actor spoiler. said, the line must be drawn here, no farther. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. A, uh, a, a, a I think it's probably this is the biggest movie, the biggest Marvel movie of the year. I can't think of of the phase certainly. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else that is. I guess maybe Thor. Thor and this one are probably the co-headliners of of their their big big. Yeah. Thing. Outside of Spider Man, I guess. Well, Sony, but, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was last year, right? Uh, sure, yeah, 2021. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking the whole yeah. phase, the whole MCU phase. Hey, man. Yeah, that was definitely another qualification aside from year. Yeah, hey, so, yeah. Hey, it was a hey, whole hey, extra Bruce, thing. I was calm down. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> uh, so anyway, big movie and uh, uh, it has a lot of weight on it. And there was a Super Bowl commercial for it, and uh, it it looks like a, a real treat. But so uh, uh, you listen or you you watch the, we watched the trailer together because I was like, hey, do you want me to tell you like you you had not seen it? And I'm like, do you want me to tell you the big thing? And you're like. Nope, I'm gonna watch it. And then we watched it, and then you were like, So that looks fun. <laughs> yep. And I was like, Did you notice the thing? And he's like, What? Br- Bryce, did did you notice the thing? I missed the trailer. I guess I missed the trailer. I saw I uh I saw the Nightman trailer. What is it? Day night. Nightmare. Nightmare. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> now we have the nightmare. nightmare. Day man. Fighter <laughs> of the night man. <laughs> ah. uh, uh, moon Knight. Moon Knight. <laughs> I watched. I saw the Moon Knight. Nightman, <laughs> starring <laughs> Oscar Isaac, <laughs> premiering on Disney Plus. <laughs> nightman. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I have good. these dreams. I'm night, man. I, I feel like I'm becoming a nightman. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I thought we were going to be talking. So I, no, I have not. I did not know that there was or see a Doctor Strange, a trailer. new a new multiverse of madness. So hmm. uh, Doctor Strange is is into some real troubling business in this in this caper and. <laughs> He's uh, hauled before some kind of tribunal, a voice unseen uh, uh, from off camera. Sounds quite a bit like Jean-Luc Picard is coming (laughs) into the uh, MCU. The gloved Mandalorian fist of Boba Fett emerges. (laughs) Uh, No, so yeah, of course, uh, uh, Professor X, possibly... Or Charles Xavier of some kind. I mean, a reminder: this is the multiverse. So a lot of many different people playing. Uh, many, many different versions of Charles Xavier. There's a lot of speculation out there. Certain uh, 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 things that have happened in in the comics uh, that this might be representative of, but uh, it, uh, it looks like uh, I don't know. It looks really fun. I, I've actually been written been uh, very excited by all of the uh, all, all, all of the Doctor Strange stuff. Um, well, the oh, uh, go ahead, Andrew. No, please, Brian. Please uh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, just my my expectations are more guarded, and I think that, um, and we've talked before about how I Brian tend, says it'll be the most awesome thing ever in all of existence. Go ahead. I tend to get worried when things uh, when stories get rubbery. And rules get bendy, and any character can show back up from the dead, uh, or you know, good characters can go back. Like when 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 no consequences happen, I I I tend it, it becomes harder for me to give myself fully over to the story or trust what I'm seeing. And it sounds like that's the literal definition of this, because even the what if series within each world, you could have surprises. But these were all speculative, consequence-free yeah. versions of it. Now we're taking all of them, mashing them up in one room. We're literally everything's totally, you know, came. It's it's in the title that everything is totally bonkers, and anyone who's dead could be alive, and anyone who's bad can be good, and vice versa. And all of that has me not skeptical, not cynical, but guarded. I'm this a, has I, nothing to do with. 
our uh, personal connections to people who have creatively left this project. Uh, well, I hadn't even thought of that. I was thinking mainly of Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think that I hear you. I, I don't know. I, I don't really have a firm position where I feel Marvel's star storytelling capabilities are right now, given, you know, two out of the last three movies that came out that did not really have any sense of weight or really deal with that. I would say that when they did, Thanos snapped his finger and half the universe got eliminated. And now if you watch the Eternals, you realize, you know, he did have a point. He may have been trying to do something good, but uh, that loss and five years later, when people came back, you know, they did, I thought like that was handled well, like, yes, everybody came back, but there was a price to be paid for this. And I think that they have done a pretty good job of trying to say like, yeah, we live in a comic book world where people can come back and things can happen, but there will be consequences. And like, uh, you know, if Black Widow comes back, it's going to probably be the Black Widow from a different universe, not the Black Widow that we know. And I think they'll try to do that. The multiverse is exciting because it is a very good solution towards a problem that had been handicapping uh, Marvel, which was the franchises had been in the hands of different studios. Yeah. You know, originally you had Captain America and Thor, Paramount, Hulk at Universal. Then you had Fox owning the X-Men and owning, you know, the Fantastic Four, even to the point that the Marvel early MCU couldn't even use the word mutant. Yeah. You know, right. and we got the weird backstory of, you know, uh, Wanda. Then the, the multiverse, which the TV shows have been sort of trying, you know, between Loki um I mean, WandaVision have been trying to do a thing to sort of establish this is a thing and it has effect. It's a great way to be like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, in our universe, this guy just studied telepathy at Cambridge. Um, in this other universe, because of an event, he actually opened up a school in upstate New York for people yeah. with mutant abilities. You right. know, in this universe, there's this guy called Reed Richards who's, you know, been doing cool stuff. And that's part of the speculation is that it might be the the Marvel Illuminati might be who Doctor Strange goes in front of, which is Professor X, Reed Richards, Black Bolt, and so. Uh, that would be right, awesome. MCU um, version. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, well, one more to throw on the pile. Of course, the entire conceit of the What If uh, series of anthologies are there are more universes than this one. Uh, let's take a peek uh, around the block. And if yeah. the, you know, the multiverse of madness uh, indicates anything, uh, uh, literally anything can happen. Yeah, and I, I do think that... Well, and also... Yeah, they're, 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 that what, what we don't know is how much of the plot that is. We don't know whether or not this is, you know, a, a lot of that stuff of, like, evil Doctor Strange and stuff like that, which was a character... I was, I was, trying, to, I was trying to dance around it because... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why we're all so oh, sensitive I, about spoilers. Is that in the trailer? I... Yes. Yeah, it's in the trailer. Oh. It's yeah. In the trailer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A character from what one if. of the what-if universes uh, whose name is, I guess... Revealed yeah. by Justin Robert Young, evil Exclusive. Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah. That there's a yeah, one where not, Doctor Strange is evil. Like, yeah. I mean, but yeah, but also, like, there, 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 there's, the there's, there's a Doctor Strange who's like twirling his mustache and saying, like, yeah. "Well, Mister Strange, <laughs> I'm <literally> evil." <laughs> That's not uh, a spoiler. Also, I, I kind of, you know, kind of the 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 metal rhino in the room too was Spider Man and how literally. Pulling in characters from the Sony early yeah. universe, and that's now like, oh yeah, those other Spider Men are real. So, you know, like when they're like, oh, is that gonna be Professor? Yes, it's gonna be Professor yes. X because Disney owns that outright. And if they want to get into an X Men movie, they don't have to go rewrite the X Men history. It's just like this was a separate thing. And um, I, I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna call it. We're gonna get our Wolverine Spider Man team up. Oh, oh wow! Hundred percent. Oh, actually, here, like, can we can we lay some early money? Is this movie the first place we see Deadpool? Because there's gonna be a Deadpool cameo in one of these movies coming up soon. I maybe we'll get a Deadpool, but I think that Disney kind of wants to keep that Deadpool brand because of the humor level. Uh, oh, I think, thing, I, think, I, think I, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think we're gonna get a lot of it, but but in in the same vein of the the Wolverine the, cameo in X Men First Class, or or the uh, Spider Ham character in uh, uh, Into the Spider Verse, where it's like that that is, and in fact, there were some great lines that had to be cut uh, because uh, his humor undercut 
the gravity of certain yeah. situations. Uh, I, wh where wherever they use Deadpool, they'll have to be judicious. I, 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 I would I would just I, think that this would this would provide an opportunity where like walking past a a, a 7 Eleven and and you know Ryan Reynolds Deadpool is like, hey, the camera's there, and then we move on to the next thing. And yeah, it, and I don't know that. I wonder. I'd be curious because he breaks the fourth. He is a fourth wall breaking character yeah. in such an extreme way. I wonder if the MCU there's a danger of that because Deadpool's great in his own movie, poking into the conventions. You drop him into another movie, and it's like, whoa. I would think a little, real? A, little, a, little, a little dabble do you if you were going to throw him into a movie that is about the craziness of it, the multiverse. It, it, and again, it wouldn't be unprecedented, because again, back to Into the Spider-Verse, uh, when uh, Spider-Ham uh, goes back to his, he says, that's all, folks. And one of the characters in universe, not to the camera, says a fourth wall breaking. Can he say that legally? Uh, and, uh, uh, like we might get something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I would be surprised. I'd be, I, I, I not say it won't happen, but, um, somebody says, oh, everybody ignored the fourth wall breaking in Deadpool. No, like that was part of the charm of Deadpool is yeah. that he gets to comment to you about the narrative and, you know, this is the part where, and it's like, this is so, it would be interesting to see. You know, yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I was, was I was just just trying to think of like, uh, uh, obviously they are going to spin um, the the multiverse stuff that seems to be their their new large arc, uh, much in the same way that the Infinity Stone saga uh, uh, kind of guided the large framework of of the the previous movies and all the gems sort of coming together. Uh, it it feels like this is going to end in a I, in a a secret war of some sort i i uh you know i still kind of get hung up i'm like all right so multiverse is about like uh oh that rick and morty episode where morty walked in and rick did the thing that caused the calamity only it was peter parker asking dr strange to do a spell and it was like that was i'm, I'm like i enjoyed that movie but i'm still like yeah, he did this kind of really weird, uncharacteristic sort of thing for the Sorcerer Supreme to sort of set all this up. Well, you know, I the, really the, wish we had the, and I don't know how much of this is just people on the internet, but the original between the original concept art uh, for Spider Man was that that was not supposed to be Doctor Strange. This Spider Man, the the new Spider Man was coming after Multiverse of Madness. There's a new character that is introduced in Multiverse of Madness that Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel that was supposed to be the one to uh, at least initiate the dumb elements of uh, 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 the, the uncharacteristic or the, the, the elements. hapless elements. Yes. Yeah. The irresponsible elements. And then Dr. Uh, Strange was supposed yeah. to like beryllium it, was supposed to clean it up. And so that would be more of a, a sacrifice that he was doing to clean it. up. Tungsten. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. You one. see her in the <laughs> trailer. <laughs> Four, She's right. in the Doctor Strange trailer, but not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think this is part of the the reshuffling of all of the, the 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 timeline of when these movies were supposed to come out. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Like the MCU. Remember, remember back in the day when we knew they were going to do this, and we were like, "Well, how literally are they going to follow the comics?" Because yeah, you, know, you have <laughs> Iron Man. Extra we have this storyline, and they're like, and Kevin Bacon, like, "We're going to do our own version." I'm like, "What? Well, how do we know it's true?" Yeah. <laughs> well, and and, and and that's that's kind of one of the things I love is that uh, it took thirty five to forty movies to get us to this place where finally we're able to have parity between the breadth of the cinematic universe and permission to do crossovers and mashups as we we basically now finally the movies have the flexibility that the comic books always had you know i i had the episode where gi joe met the transformers yeah. and how on earth you would think that at some point while fighting cobra somebody would say yo man you hear about these cars that turned yeah. into giant <laughs> robots maybe we could get their help yeah uh can i ask you guys a question uh, uh, about comic book movies but not about the mcu mm-hmm Pretty excited about this Batman movie because I feel like I should be more excited about it. And every time I think about getting excited about it, I hear a, or read a quote from Robert Pattinson where he's like, "I'm I'm excited because Bruce Wayne's a piece of garbage." And I'm like, I have gotten less excited the, the whenever I, I, I hear <clears throat> him talk. But I should be excited I, because I like kind of everybody involved in it, even Pattinson. I I'm gonna wait. I, 
I got my tickets, but I'll, I remember reading. Remember Starlog magazine is we like oh, that yeah. was the internet in print form before the internet. And I was reading an interview with an actor talking about a character he was playing. He says, "Oh, he's not heroic. He's not likable. He's a very selfish sort of person." And I'm like, "Oh, well, I don't like this character. I don't know if I want to see this movie." But I went to go see Army of Darkness with my father, anyways. <laughs> and uh, Ash became the best, the best, most awesome character ever. And and that was and that was Bruce Campbell understanding like. No, his pettiness is this, is that. So when I hear Robert Patton say this, I see that him he's trying to like define it by other than he's heroic, he's this, he's that, and also where he is at this point in his life. Well, and also like, what uh, a weird job because like actors, uh, they I uh, let's just take his, on faith that their primary talent is acting and maybe not um, advertising. Uh, and so all of a sudden, when you have an interview, it's like okay, the one thing. Uh, <laughs> See, it's so it's uh, it's so dumb. Even an actor could do it. Is is like, well, don't say what an honor it is to you know, like everyone else does. You know, say literally anything else, and and you could just reach for whatever insights you think you brought to the table. I have so I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, in the Disney Marvel universe, when was the first time we saw a uh, on screen same sex couple? I mean, all of them. If in you, the if Disney you, Marvel uh, <laughs> universe, so we're talking MC. So we're like post, like Iron Man and and Captain America. Like, or yeah, are the we Disney cool? Disney produced uh, the Disney, Disney released Marvel produced films. Marvel films. Okay, Disney released Marvel movies. Oh, that's squirrely. That's squirrel. The, the squirreling words. I don't. No, I stand behind my my uh, affirmation that if you believe the Kinsey report, then ten percent of every human you've seen <laughs> has has as no has that been we gay. couple like the idea of the couple like a here's couple, a couple they're yeah. romantically involved yeah okay mm. I don't know I I tap out yeah I don't well they say it was the Eternals oh I didn't see that so well then yeah right yeah 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 okay but the movie that came out before the Eternals which I don't think anybody here saw, but I finally watched, was The New Mutants. Oh, and, and it, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Wolf Spain and the other character, oh. they have the two girls. They are, you know, relationship, whatever, and very well handled, oh, actually. Oh, and I guess and that was up, technically Disney released, but that was Fox. Because Disney took Fox over Fox created. and Disney yeah, made changes. Squirrely. That was squirrely. That was squirrely. And he picked well, a movie nobody saw. <laughs> So I want to bring this up. There have been, without looking, anybody know how many movies have been in the X Men universe when they, with under Fox? Right. Nine so, would be my guess. I'm gonna. Get... Are we counting Logan? Yeah. Lo X Men universe. X -Men well, no, 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 no. no. I mean, they, they very so, deliberately yes. say and do some things to indicate that it might not it be in the same universe, but an echo of a similar universe. Uh, Profe he was a member of the X-Men. Professor X is in there. That's the X-Men universe. It's an X-Men universe. Uh, okay. Um, I'm, uh, so I, uh, I have an educated guess. I just was on the Wikipedia for Mar Marvel Cinematic 12. Universe and 27 Damn! MCU movies. Damn! No, he, he... 27 MCU movies. Oh. Yeah. Uh, oh. That Sorry, is part I of my... Prematurely. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of... But So that makes me think that it's going to be 15. I think that there's a lot, but I think you got to keep it in check. 13. 13. Ooh, almost. And 13. the last one was. I'm not counting the, Logan. The... <laughs> <laughs> well, I could be right. It's clearly I'm on Brian's universe. side. He made a god of good points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, the uh, again, we can say timeline. We so, that, so, that would again, count, the timeline. That would, so, that would count Deadpool, both Deadpools, Logan. New Mutants. There are there were two trilogies of of like X Men movies, right? Um, there, well, there's actually if you look at it, they have the Wolverine trilogy, which is Origins, Wolverine, and Logan. Okay. The X Men original trilogy, then the prequels, which is First Class, Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, and Dark Phoenix. Oh, that went four. Yipes. Yep. Yep. Uh, wow. First Class, I Days of Future Past. I forgot. 
God, apocalypse. You, 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 uh, yeah. Remember, remember when they were like, okay, let's let's new dress, que- let's, new let's, question. Let's let, let, exact let's, same let's, question, let's dress but Oscar but with Isaac the word, up with the like word. Barney and try to watch him act through it. it. Like it was like Thanos, but not like you could look at how bad Thanos could have turned out. Go look at Apocalypse, <laughs> and he's just waddling <laughs> like just a big eraser. <laughs> he's like, Oscar Isaac is a great actor, but he's not a tall guy, and so you see him there next to these people, and he's like, like. <laughs> He's Are just, you a character from HR Puff and stuff? He's just sort of like bopping around. I'm the most formidable opponent. Come and challenge me. Sorry, Brian. I ran over you. What were you saying? Oh, no, it's too. That, that's long. We, we passed that McDonald's a long time ago. Oh, sorry. My apologies. <laughs> oh, there's a Burger King up ahead. <laughs> Good. Uh, sorry, you're saying it's time for us to make some picks? Well, no, I want to I I <laughs> clarify this one. I want to back up into this, though. Um uh it is fascinating because we think about like oh there's a few x-men movies like there's been half as many x-men movies as there have been marvel yeah you know mcu movies which is sort of like that's the thing that made my brain kind of explode was like holy cow like there's been a lot of those a lot of those i mean yeah that that is one thing that has been kind of just uh, uh totally lost to history is the fact that the mcu was really just reheated like just leftover pieces comparative to the popularity of the x-men the x-men was just so pre- previous to the movies you know x-men was just so much more popular than than anything that like now to have made household names out of thor and 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 even iron know. man iron man was yeah who boy what a what a what a garbage also ran of a character mm-hmm. uh, he puts on armor i guess and he shoots things he's got cool shooters out of his hands yeah uh, also he's rich but yeah, I think the idea of uh, of what they have done with the MCU. I mean, again, it's like, hates those Koreans that took them prisoner. <laughs> yes, yeah, or the other ethnicity because they rebooted yeah, every exactly. every, or every also few hates decades. the Vietnamese who yeah. took them prisoner. Also, also the Afghanis yeah, who took them prisoner. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, 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 I mean Kevin Feige is just he's the greatest producer in the history of Hollywood, right? Is there anybody that is even kind of close to the amount of money that he has made there are there are people who's there (laughs) there are names that you'll hear that were attached to stuff but i think that when you think about actually hands-on like for who's actually just you you can measure this is what it's like when you don't have this person this is what it's like when you have this person i think yeah feige's i i by the way i've gone through more of those leaked emails from the sony hacks uh are they good of him just looking over the scripts of the various Spider-Man movies that Sony, like the, the Garfield franchise. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, turns out he was right. <laughs> it turns out Feige's <laughs> very smart about what makes a good uh, Spider-Man movie and what makes a bad Spider-Man movie and how much every moment where you are making him uh, the, the, the super blooded uh, son of super spies makes him less the everyday super friendly neighborhood, friendly Spider-Man. neighborhood Spider-Man, which yeah. is, I don't know I... the entire point of Spider-Man. Did they do that in the new one? Went... In the, in the, in the, in the Garfield. Web, oh, yeah. The, web, the web oh, of the Gar- verse. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I, what gets to me about that too was like, they're like, ah, oh, we're going to invent this backstory and then we're going to do the Senator six. And somebody's going, you know, Miles Morales and, uh, Gwen are Gwen say, are really neat characters. We're gonna do a thing with the Sinister Six and Speeders, Peter's, you know, Spider Blood. But yeah, Miles Morales and Gwen are really good characters. No, no, nobody wants those. Nobody wants those. We know what people want, and it's like, ah, uh, you know, I think Miles Morales is kind of a really awesome character, and I think that if we get a, I think Spider Gwen could be a live action Spider Gwen would be colossal. But it's just weird massive, how Sony just massive. didn't quite know what they had. No, no, and 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 well, and and at this point, I suspect if I were in Sony's shoes, uh, I would do nothing. I, I first of all, I would wait and see how the the second Spider Verse uh, does, and if it does well, I would do nothing to disturb that beautiful, beautiful magic that is happening in that franchise. I like, I just I can't think of that franchise or that that first movie without instantly thinking of at least one part that makes me smile right away. Uh, well, they're still continuing ahead. So we remember we got Morbius, we got Craven coming. So, which by the way, 
Craven is one of my favorite. I mean, uh, Mysterio and Craven are two of my favorite Spider-Man villains of, of, of all time because you can tell very distinct and specific stories with them. Uh, I have very little interest in a Craven standalone. Uh, movie. May may I may I make a proposal that may intrigue you? Uh, when they did the you may. when they first did the Ultimate Spider-Man comic book series, and uh, that this is back when the idea of rebooting the entire universe yeah. from scratch was novel or whatever, they positioned Craven, and I believe this was concurrent with a, they they had him hosting a reality hunting TV show. And, um, uh, but uh, immediately as I describe that, if I remember correctly, they weren't trying to reduce him and make him seem like a faker. They were trying to basically be have, position him as the crocodile hunter. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I would, I would watch the hell out of that. I, I mean, I think, uh, Craven, the influencer, I or, think I would, mean, be, would be, imagine would be a if very he's novel, charming a very and fun take. and funny and you hate to, to, to recognize oh, he's yeah. a villain. I mean, I think that like, you know, you don't have to make him the, the broken out back, you know, kind of person you can, you can make him somebody that is exciting and, and sexy. But like, uh, uh, I, I guess I, I really like him when he's trying to kill Spider-Man. <laughs> like, I guess that's the other thing is that it's like, it, it just makes uh, uh, what I love the most about the Craven idea is that there's no like, why is he trying to kill Spider-Man? It's like, well, to show the world a lesson that if if the hero can be humiliated, it's like, no, I want to kill him because he he's a crazy animal. <laughs> I <laughs> kill I crazy know. animals. That's like my thing. You, I love to kill crazy animals. Do you know who's playing Craven? Mm -mm. No. Aaron Taylor Johnson. I don't kick ass. So kick oh, ass and, Quicksilver. And Quicksilver. Yeah. Yeah. I think he'd be, I mean, I think he'd be, he'd be, he'd be good. I guess I just, you know, I don't know. I have very little interest in, in, in the Morbius movie. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, but, all yeah, the, I but then again, I'll, I also love, I mean, Peacemaker, it's making a villain into a, its own thing, but you know, yeah, I'll see. I, I'm not I'm not terribly excited by Sony's own I never saw Venom, so I don't have a you know qualified opinion Venom. on outside of that, but, uh, but and it, you know what not, now that I think I'm about it, it, I would pay I would definitely pay twenty bucks to see a G.I. Joe meets the Transformers full on live action movie. <laughs> How great would that be? I'm kind of shocked I haven't done it. Right? Um by the way, did you guys hear the leaks? Well, uh, I, uh, oh wait! Oh, uh, hold on. Andrew has what looks like uh, a knowing smile. Well, I was like, "Have you ha have you <laughs> watched the GI Joe movies?" Uh, no, but uh, but because I hear they were also ran uh, uh, action adventures. Transformers are Citizen Kane. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, but, but like, again, like a self-aware you're, version. <laughs> you're, you're watching G.I. Joe, which would be great. You're watching, like, Lord and Miller doing G.I. Joe. You're, like, you're watching them go into the facility. They don't have helmets on. You're like, and not that that's my big grip, but, like, why do they have helmets? Oh, so we can see their faces? Yeah. And it's like, it doesn't know what world it needs to be in. They don't understand, is this just stupid cartoons, or is this supposed to be serious with drama, and it's just a joke? I'm sorry, you were saying. Um, there was, I believe it was an interview with Lord and Miller, speaking of Lord and Miller, where they discussed the uh uh crossover of 21 jump street and men in black that was that was going to happen until uh uh stuff happened but there was a script like written oh like a full movie of the yes, two universes it was, colliding it was going to happen oh yeah. my god and and so yeah they uh uh but yeah they they, they went through a few things because now it, it almost certainly is not although channing tatum says it's like the funniest script that he's ever uh he's ever written but Gosh. One of one of the things was that apparently inside the Men in Black, your rank was designated by the color of your suits, so you had to, it was like like a black belt. Like, oh, that's hilarious! So, so they have to go around in so giant would, yellow suits. So they would have gray, like 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 light blue suits for the majority of the movie because they were like trainees. That's pretty good. That's uh, a really funny. Bit. Powder blue. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you, God. Uh, well, men in they, blue. and remember and. Any of you see the last Men in Black movie? Nope. Oh, you mean let's just take the cast of oh. Thor and pretend like we can get more people to go see him? 
Yeah, that might have influenced yeah. some of our summer movie draft decisions. Yeah, Men in Black International, yeah, because that was that was the thing that we all left the theater saying after the Men in Black movies. This is too domestic. <laughs> I really would appreciate if we would get more international in the next adventure. Even the character of New York City had to be replaced. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, not... Uh, uh, not great, but that's the movie that they made instead of doing uh, the 21 Jump Street Men in Black crossover. And is there anybody like sitting around at like Sony, you know, when when Joe says, you know what I'm thinking? Like, hey, Joe, uh, remember, what did you want? Men in Black International, that was yours, right? Why don't you sit down and shut up, Joe? <laughs> How about you never we, talk we again, had... Joe? <laughs> We could add Lord and Miller doing this other thing, but like you're like, no, international guys, you know, like the House of Pancakes. No, Joe, <laughs> sit down. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess there's also, that was at the point pre-Spider-Verse, right, where it's like, oh, okay, well, they're just going to make a joke at everything. They're just going to make a joke out of 21 Jump Street, and sure, those were funny, but who cares about 21 Jump Street? We're not going to ruin a hallowed institution like Men in Black <laughs> or Han Solo. No, let's get get their hands that get their joking fingers off it. They'll never make a beloved thing like into the spider bird. <laughs> yep. Oh wow! What's, why give the fans what they want? Yeah, why do a thing that delights fans with these very very serious properties like Han Solo and Men in Black? Like let's <laughs> let's remove ooh fun frivolity uh, 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 a recognition of the fact that we've done a bunch of these movies some of which have dodgy qualities clearly for receipts yes but what do lord and miller know about toy movies yeah when have they ever How sold many it? lego movies do they need to make before <laughs> <laughs> listen uh i think what i want to do is take everything you love about this thing and i'm gonna do it completely different and we're all going to be happy. Because oh. you're wrong for why you like it. You need to do it this way anyway. All right. Hey, Brian, yeah. are you you picking something? You want to pick something in the galaxy, and we'll all look at it for a little bit and then uh, we'll repeat the process? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'll keep I'll keep it short. Uh, I showed you a little bit of it. Uh, look, I don't watch TV. I don't got no cable. I mean, I watch a lot of TV programming, but, you know, I watch it when I want on whatever device I please. Mm. When you go on vacation, sometimes you don't get to do that. And so yeah. you watch a little thing called cable television. I kid you not. My kids come in from their room and they're all like, whoa, whoa, did you pay for this? And I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, it's it's, it's uh, uh, the, the Disney Channel. They're like, yeah, the menu said we had to pay for an upgrade to our package to watch on demand programming. I was like, well, it's not on demand. I just went to the Disney Channel. And they're like, well, how do you do that? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you this remote. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to show you this little CH channel up. here. Channel down. Channel down. Channel down. And then he's like, hey, yeah, I'm going to keep on going until I see some cartoons. <laughs> and here we go. And that's the story of how I discover, I think it's called uh, Big City Greens on uh, uh, Disney Channel. Um, uh, an indication, if this is an indication of where that, that cartoon filled network is going, uh, I'm really excited because. Um, they were making jokes about get back to making them nuclear bombs. And you definitely see a bodyguard twist a neck and kill a man at one point. And it's just a throwaway gag. And it's smart, funny, and it has a lot of DNA that it shares with a regular show. Specifically, just watch uh, the half of an episode called Bad Influencer. It's on uh, Disney Plus because if you're civilized, you can summon it on demand. Mm. That pick. was sort of the big kind of surprise was the content at Disney Plus. And like you looked at the Netflix had their big fall because of their numbers, the lack of growth, and Disney Plus has been keeps moving along. Yeah. I got a pick. Uh, I uh, just got back from vacation, and the, the thing, the game, the app that saved my hide was not uh, a Netflix a a game or an Apple Arcade game. Uh, it was um, a knockoff of everyone's favorite game, Wordle, <laughs> that uh, lets you play as much as you want. I like this game, Word Game Hero. It has, um, it, it is a lot like Wordle. If you know Wordle, it's like Wordle. You're playing Lingo or Mastermind, basically, with a five-letter word. Um, 
but this one this one lets you play as much as you want um you get to play a certain number of times per day if you don't pay otherwise it's like a one time three dollar charge for unlimited they have icons there are no i don't think that there are any ads you can do six and seven letter words and boy howdy six letters changes the game it changes the game (laughs) oh we're heating up um and some other stuff it keeps streaks and other fun stuff so i for a for like it's not called wordle so i feel okay by using it but um it's good and you could just play it whenever you want and um yeah i don't know i think if you're looking for one of those word game hero from uh jake jake nelson is not very big it doesn't have like a website so Uh, it's on ios uh, because you mentioned a video game, it reminded me of something I wanted to bring up that maybe I'll, I'll I issue as a challenge to anybody who feels like taking it. Um, there was a news item uh, about uh, the MMO Lost Ark. You, you hear about this? That's right. Uh, supposedly the newest number one most played game on Steam or something. Like uh, that. Well, uh, they had nearly one million concurrent users in this. It's a. Uh, it's like. It looks and feels like late stage Diablo, yeah. and it does the thing. It it refuses to do the thing that everyone hates about MMOs, which is maybe it gives you a taste of having all the powers, and then it's like, but then you got balked on the head by this pear that fell out of a tree. Mm-hmm. Now you have to start again from scratch. But instead, it's like you just start off awesome, and then you're just awesome, and it keeps on being awesome. And uh, oh. as a result, so many people are playing. I tried to play it last night, and. It, the, I couldn't get past the, uh, the cheat bot that oh. like, it wouldn't let me in. And I don't think it's because I was cheating because I don't, wouldn't know how to cheat. <laughs> uh, I think it's because their servers are overrun yeah. by, and they can't authenticate things. But, uh, that's, that's my challenge is I'm, I'm going to give this a try by next week. Mm-hmm. I think you guys might get a kick out of it too. Uh, you know, I will probably. Did, did you cry when you didn't get to play it? Did you cry, Brian? Did you go uh, cry? Were you like, I wanted to play it? No, game. I was. I, I went, went and watched Big City Greens and Righteous Gemstones. It was yeah. great. Did you even? Did you eventually get in? Yeah, at all? I, I, no. I ran out of time. Yeah, but he'll cry tears of joy when <laughs> he gets I eventually in. Do. <laughs> He's just streaming down his cheeks as he plays <laughs> Lost Ark. Oh! <laughs> A righteous destiny fulfilled. He'll scream as his uh, children uh, run in horror because they've never seen such joy on their father's face. Uh, hey, uh, uh, I'm gonna pick another HBO show. It's Righteous Chimson. Boy, is it so good. You know what? It's just so. I'll allow it. There is a there is a there is a scene in the episode that aired last night that. Is physical comedy oh, Jesus on a God. level <laughs> that I... had me screaming <laughs> laughing. I was screaming. It was the one of the funniest things I have ever seen on television. Uh that I just love the show that that exists where what? they're like, Yup, we're just gonna lock down the just camera do and like do the funniest <laughs> thing minutes. that you can do with that that's not and what's great is that's not even the biggest laugh of the episode the biggest laugh of the episode involves a trailer in a bmw uh uh to, for for my buddy that's what i was talking about oh i thought you were what talk- are you talking about? i thought you were talking about the opening, oh, the opening? scene <laughs> the opening oh scene. No. no 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 that that to me that is that was that was very funny also it's just like it just just you know for a show that obviously is not shy of having real drama they knew, all right, we have a lot of real drama. There's, there might be a hesitancy to think how seriously we should take this episode. <laughs> and immediately they're like, no, it's still the Righteous Gemstones. <laughs> We're going to start should, off with a press release. We are just going to say, don't take it that seriously. <laughs> we're still a comedy show, and we're going to make sure you're aware that this is a comedy show. No, the, I, the, the physical gag I'm talking about was the trailer in the BMW. Oh, so good. Which, uh, uh, was, and then there's uh-huh. there was a you see the the warning at the top where it says like what it contains and it says nudity. I'm like, well, there's gonna be a dong at the wrong time here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, like, yeah. As soon as you saw Keith uh, poking through that eye hole, I'm like, well, I know what's coming through the <laughs> yeah. other end of that. <laughs> uh, I'll also say shout out to I guess the people at HBO. I I I end up watching the next time on uh, clips for for shows oh yeah i try to dodge those but uh, yeah and i did that last week uh 
oh gosh, I just realized we're not spoiling the thing. I did that last week thinking that something that happened would end up going a certain way. The next week on certainly made it seem like, oh no, they're saying words that are pretty definitive about the way that that episode ends. And then that is not the impression that you get from watching the episode at all. And it's very interesting how they did that. How many more episodes do we have this season of that? Uh, Two more. Two more? Two more, yeah. There's an, Thank another. God. It would be so, I, uh, such a bummer if that end piece maker ended the same week. I'd be so yeah, sad. I, uh, uh, Bryce, like I had the other take. When I watched last week's coming next time, I'm like, oh, okay, now I know that it's the, it's the outcome I'm hoping for mm. because the... Yeah, yeah, we don't, we're we don't. we not spoiling it. You can't spoil the Did trailer. Did they spoil yeah, the trailer? Like, That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> trailer was in the season preview. Like, you saw that. The trailer was a thing that, like, if you saw, oh, you watched mm, the I'm glad I missed season, it. That was Just, in there. I, I, I remember yeah. seeing it, but... <laughs> The the lingering take on it, the length of it is it just and and that it r- ends with him running like it just it was uh, like oh god I, I was just I laughing like so hard his elixirs <laughs> <laughs> he's spanking BJ in the parking lot just uh, overall uh, just good. so many so many uh, uh, Boveries I'm on team Boveries. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, my pick is uh, I I actually thought it was all right. I think it was missing. It felt like it missed an act, and it felt like it was something that certainly got overworked a bit. But in the X Men franchise, it's not the worst movie, and that is the New Mutants. New I Mutants. actually watched this in New Mutants, and again, it's the the premise was they wanted to do let's do kind of a, a teen kind of young person horror movie set in the X Men world. Which, if you think about it. Like finding out you got mutant powers and going to facilities and stuff would be pretty horrific. I don't know that it really fully delivered on all of that, but I compare it to let's say like I haven't been able to make it through Fantastic Four yet, the the, the latest version of that because like I just start like this like I don't feel like they understand like smart people or you know <laughs> the Fantastic Four like you're oh my invention's gonna be done I'm like. Who, what, like, like, I don't, like, this is not, anyhow, but I'll try to make it through there, because maybe that turns out better, but I, I was like, oh, I didn't feel like I wasted my time watching the New Mutants, you know, and it, it's not, again, it feels like there's parts missing, it's a reworked movie, but uh, if you're curious, you know, I'd say go check it out. So. Is that, where, where's that streaming? Is that on Disney Plus? HBO, I think HBO. Oh, HBO's got it. I think, yeah, I believe. Um, so again, cause that was a movie that like you could get, I could imagine like they had to redo, like, this is, this is the, I can't imagine what it's like to make a movie at that level, but literally, apparently this movie was originally set in the 1980s. Right. <laughs> and then X-Men apocalypse comes out and the Fox executives realized the, the keen, the, the brilliant, the brilliant, you know, the executives there realized well, being set in the 80s was clearly the problem because the X-Men Apocalypse was set in the 80s. So the note was sent to the New Mutants. You've got to change that. And so, like, there's a scene where they literally... All the TV monitors are, like, old-school TV monitors. which I was watching something, and that's kind of interesting, weird. But then there was a reason. And then at one point, though, you see somebody looking at, like, a picture of a girl on a phone with, like, a, an LCD display. Yeah. And literally, it was, like, an added-in scene or something to sort of set this... <laughs> Further in. into the future into a world of the in the modern day time be, Jesus. because if god forbid cuz that was a problem the X-Men apocalypse was the 1980s yeah <laughs> that was that was the issue not not the script or the yeah. or the yeah. you know, uh, sarcophagus that they put Oscar Isaac in so he could waddle around and threaten the X-Men <laughs> and the grimace from McDonald's <laughs> gentlemen it's been after oh already hey good after in Good afternoon, everybody. Let's laugh. Let's get after it. We are going to go offline. We'll be back in a couple of hours. The elixirs. <laughs> the elixirs. The elixirs. We'll be back in about two hours with uh, Jenny Josephson, I believe, on Court Killers today. So that'd be fun. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.